very generous of you. And uh, to those who say, well, you know, he could have moved it as the response to the, hey, this is this was something that's just pro forma at this point. Of course, it's pro forma. Just move it. Uh, there's a couple problems. One, there's already 144 dates that are taken up by LGBTQIA 2S plus 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 recognition days. So that's number one. So it's just tough to fit it in. Right. With all those other days. And you can't do it in June because that's already taken collectively as the month. Yes. And I'm sure Jesus won't mind sharing a platform on Easter Sunday with RuPaul. Right. Um, (laughs) And so and then the second thing is, um, do you not understand the relationship? You defer. You defer. This is not reciprocal. You are owed no consideration. I'm going to accommodate uh, some hateful, bigoted, transphobic Christian nationalists? I don't think so. <laughs> Move it. Who the hell do you think you're talking to? Well, I, Who the hell do you think you are? Uh, I, I thought it was God's work that it landed on the same day. I said, see, now people are realizing, because it has been around for years, and people, they ignore it. They're like, oh, yeah, it's just, you know, it's just the month of June. And then now, now it's not just the month of June. Like the, the day that it fell on the same day as Easter, I'm like, now people are going to wake up. Now Christians who've been kind of, you know, on the fence or sleeping at the wheel or denying what's going on, they can't deny it because it's in their face, people. It's right no, there. No, they won't. Oh, yeah, it woke oh, a few up, I think. It's, I mean. it's unfortunate. Uh, anyway, i got to get over to Drag Queen Story or at the parish. I got to recite the Sparkle Creed at my Lutheran church in Minnesota. No. Because most of these churches have and, and denominations have been co-opted, too. Because 15 years ago, and well before then, frankly. Yeah. And then came the redefinition of marriage. And then came the redefinition of biological sex. Well, the redefinition of gender identity, you know, redefinition of biological sex. And now we're to the point of, I don't know, the redefinition of uh, child predation. Minor attracted persons. That's going to be legalized soon, too. And prostitution, because you mentioned uh, last week about the, you know, legalizing prostitution. Didn't they have uh, at Maggiano's at the City Press Club, they had people, a state senator, speak about legalizing that? Brian, St. John, Indiana. Amy, Amy, it is not just June. June is Pride Month. October is LGBTQ History Month. And November 13th through 19th is Trans Awareness Week. Every year, they get nine weeks a year. Oh, it's more than that. Oh, it's 104, 144 days. I've got the list. 144. Okay. Can you 145. Say? No, I'm sorry. 145, including Trans Day of Visibility. Yeah, 145. Right. So so my point is it's not just June. No, we have, um, yeah, we have, uh, uh, we have, you know, about 100 days to go to knock out, you know, knock out every day, making sure that we're always thinking about this. It's front and center. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, sir. Thanks for the call, Brian. Amen to the state. That's who we worship. Miguel Cardona, uh, the Secretary of Education, he was one of those. Minbo. Uh, who had uh, an important message for the kids. You know, the kids in high schools and grade schools, grade schools specifically, they like to get them young. To the many transgender students across the country listening on this Trans Day of Visibility, we in the Biden-Harris administration want you to know that we see you, we support you, and we celebrate you. We also know it's not an easy time to be you. Walking into a classroom should be an act of hope, not an act of bravery. But every day you choose to show up as your true self, you make this world a more brave, more honest, and more free place. In your gift for seeing things as they could be, I see the promise of America. Today, we at the Department of Education want you to know that your school, your community, and your country are better because you're a part of it. You don't just belong here. We need you here. From all of us here at the Department of Education, happy Trans Day of Visibility. Rachel Levine is the hope for America's future. He's the embodiment of it. 
Uh, you know, it's a race. It's a race to to uh, see who is the most tolerant, who is the most open-minded, who is uh, the greatest ally. That's what we should be focused on. Uh, and you know, and, and and you Christians, look, as uh, Miguel Cardona says implicitly, we don't see you, and we don't want to see you, and we don't want to hear from you. Most importantly, so just uh, keep your spiteful views to yourself. You fold in, or you get rolled over, and so most fold in and have. Well, and they keep catering to this notion that all boys are going to be transiting over to women. I mean, District 21, Wheeling, over spring break, because they went back to school yesterday, and they thought it was an April Fool's joke. It wasn't. Those are really tampon dispensers in the boys' bathrooms. What's and parents, law? well, parents were complaining, like, the, the boys' tampons are free, and the girls are 25 cents. Boys aren't even well, using tampons anyway. But, yes, it is a law. Oh, okay. boys aren't using tampons anymore? Yeah, this just in. Boys no, don't use they tampons. Never have, but it, they're middle, mm-hmm. elementary and middle schools. A state law. Oh, 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 something else that, uh, that slipped by the goalie. Nobody knows it's a state law because it's not a big deal. What's the big deal? You know, boys don't have to take the tampons if they don't want them in the boys' room. What's the big deal? And if girls have to pay for them and boys and oh, that's easy to solve. Just to have a, boy, a girl choose to go to the boys' room. Why, frankly, why are there boys' and girls' rooms? Because gender is a social construct. It's invented. So why isn't there, why why do we have these anachronisms in our schools, boys and girls rooms? What's a boy? What's a girl? No one knows. So go wherever you want. Go in the hallway. I don't care. Who cares? What's the big deal? What's the big deal? What's the big deal? What's the big deal? I've heard that for the last 15 years. There's no big deal. Let's uh, press the pedal down. And get to full depravity faster. Well, put urinals then in the girls' washrooms. I mean, let's go uh-huh. if we're going to do it. What what uh, what is this girls' washroom you oh, speak that's of? Right. Yeah. Let me give you an example of somebody who is winning. Somebody he who is conceiving of this properly. Somebody that you should emulate, and your kid should as well. Wayne Brady. Wayne Brady knows what winning looks like. In 2024 America, you know Wayne Brady, the comedian and yeah. host of Let's Let's Make a Deal, the latest iteration of it, and so forth. Whose line is it anyway? He's on all the time. People think that you're an indecisive bisexual. It's like no, 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 no. Let me set you straight. What what the definition basically boils boils down to is regardless of gender, regardless. So that means that I. I am happily free to fall in love with anybody here. If you're gay, if you're straight, if you're non-binary, trans, I don't care. It's the person, which in my mind is the ultimate in acceptance and loving. So I win. Uh, Wayne Brady, pansexual, declares victory. And he's right to. He did win. Pansexual Wayne Brady. I win. Right. He knows how the game is played. Are you starting to get it? People out there listening, you starting to get how the game is played? Is it, is it uh, penetrating? Pun intended. Yet. It's been 15 years. It's been a lot longer than that. But 15 years since they formalized it with a mm-hmm. proclamation. Bob Buffalo Grove. Good morning, uh, Dan and Amy, and welcome back. Hope you had a good uh, time off, uh, Amy. Trans Day of Visibility. Here's something, yeah. I, here's something I posted science. on several websites, comments. Never did I think I'd be living in the twilight zone, moving on to the outer limits and going one step beyond. I mean, the insanity that's going on right now is just bizarre. Have a good week of shows, and... Um, Talk to you soon. Have yeah. a great day. And, Bob, your tax dollars are paying for those tampons in the elementary schools in your neighborhood. 
Did, didn't uh, we do a state state thing where uh, we removed the sales tax on tampons, or was that temporary? There was. I don't know. I don't buy tampons. Yes. I'm not in, well, I'm not in grade school anymore, so yeah. <laughs> I mean, how they're going to just use those to stuff up the toilets and the sinks and use them as rocket ships? It's going to be great. And I heard the boys uh, from people, parents who have kids that go to school there. They were, they thought it was an April Fool's joke at first, and then they said, "Why we don't use tampons and we don't want them in our bathroom." Well, it's, it's, it's easily solved. They, just, you know, they, they're ignorant. Tear it down. Uh, have uh, Dylan Mulvaney come in for a student assembly and show how boy show boys how to use the tampons. That's all. Mm-hmm. Coming up at uh, five thirty-eight, boy, I'll tell you the one bullet that Chicago consistently dodges: law enforcement, and we've done it again. Five thirty-eight. And what the heck's going up at uh, going on at Top Golf in Naperville? But now let's head into the newsroom, where I'm sure Mike Scott and Casey will report it. Iowa Hawkeyes won. Well, you didn't listen at 5 o'clock, did you? I didn't. Okay. I'm wearing my Hawkeye shirt, just in case. You Pay attention it. next time. <laughs> girls t- NCAA for a girl's ticket, or a woman's, excuse me. We're not yeah, girls anymore. Uh, there, there's an economic principle at work there. 287 for a boys, it? it's 195. Do you want me to explain it to sure. you? Sure, yeah, please. How many seats are there at uh, the okay. Rocket uh, Arena in Cleveland? Cleveland? I Too do. many. 19, for, that, for that contest. <laughs> 19,000. How many seats are there... At the State Farm Center in Glendale, Arizona. Oh, God. It's got to be twice that. 63000 mm. Well, they should switch venues. That's why there <laughs> are. That's why the prices are where they are. We were it's, in Cleveland, Dan, for the RNC convention. It's an we economic principle. Yes, yeah. yeah. Yes. And if uh, if it doesn't work in Cleveland, they can always use Amundsen's gym. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that might actually be fun. Okay, all right. 533 on AM 560, The Answer. Police in Finland this morning. Say one of three students who were wounded in a school shooting has died, and the other two are seriously wounded. The suspect, also a 12-year-old, was arrested later on Tuesday. A temporary channel is now open around the site of the Baltimore Bridge collapse for essential vessels and for clearing debris. Colonel Roland Butler of the Maryland State Police says this morning the search for those still missing from the collapse continues. Brave members of our underwater rescue teams remain on standby. They will resume their recovery efforts once the Unified Command has been notified that it's safe for them to resume diving operations. Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsed last week, killing six. President Biden is set to visit the city on Friday. At least five aid workers delivering food into war-torn Gaza are dead. After an Israeli airstrike, according to reports on Monday, they worked for the nonprofit World Central Kitchen. An Israeli airstrike in Syria being blamed for the killing of key Iranian military commanders. Iran's promising to avenge the killing of two of its generals. Federal judge is rejecting Hunter Biden's efforts to get criminal tax charges dismissed. And a judge in former President Trump's New York criminal trial is expanding a partial gag order in that case. The Northern Illinois man charged with killing four and injuring seven others by stabbing, beating, and driving over them is expected back in court today. The judge in Rockford is expected to consider prosecutors' request that Christian Soto remain jailed. On Monday afternoon, Chicago City Council met with only one item to consider, Byron Sigjo Lopez. Several of Lopez's colleagues called on that called for the meeting to strip the two-term alderman of his chairmanship of the Housing Committee, and the Democrat Socialist appeared at the at a highly controversial event. That vote failed after Lopez defended himself. That if in any way, shape, or form, my actions have offended anyone, especially veterans, I'll take full accountability. But not, not once. By no means, I'm going to condemn a veteran for using his First Amendment right. In an earlier business meeting Monday morning, police and fire committee successfully advanced an ordinance allowing shot spotter technology in individual wards. That goes before the full city council on April 17. A North Chicago man facing kidnapping charges related to an incident in Wadsworth. Jonathan Luna Carrasco was arrested over the weekend and made his first court appearance yesterday. Chicago sports, Hawks over the Bulls, 113 to 101. Cubs shut out the Rockies 5-0, opening their set at Wrigley Field. 
while the Braves blew out the White Sox 9-0 in a rain-shortened eight innings. Blackhawks will try to keep a good thing going when they visit the Islanders tonight. UConn beat Southern Cal to reach the women's Final Four in hoops, joining Iowa, South Carolina, and NC State. The news is a service of Crosscom Public Adjusters. If your home or business has an insurance claim, Crosscom will help you get what you need and have coming to you. They've helped thousands. CrosscomPublicAdjusters.com. A check of traffic and weather on the way next on AM560. Dr. Sebastian Gorka sees a roll reversal. And you're going to cut this and you're going to clip this so that it's completely out of context. She tweeted after she became a congresswoman that protests are about m making people uncomfortable. Hey, buttercup, how does it feel now? Do you feel uncomfortable? America First with Dr. Sebastian Gorka. Afternoons at 3, right before Sean Thompson at 4 on AM 560. The Answer. And paid for by America First Tax Group. Attention, if you or your business is behind in filing your tax returns, or if you owe over $10,000 in back taxes to the IRS, please listen carefully. The IRS does not joke around and will not stop their collection efforts. If you're tired of the IRS letters, levies, liens, or wage garnishments and would like to get a fresh start, we can help. Due to the financial hardships in the country, the IRS is making it easier than ever to settle tax problems for those who owe more than $10,000. We can help settle your delinquent tax problems and all collections and may even reduce your back taxes significantly. Even if you can't afford to pay your back taxes, you can still get the help you need. We've helped thousands of taxpayers just like you, but you must call 800-852-3467 today to stop your tax problem from getting worse. The information is free and the help is real. Call 800-852-3467. That's 800-852-3467. Again, 800-852-3467. Quick delivery service, what do you need delivered today? Hi, I'm trying to work through a last minute to-do list for my boss. Can you deliver a hard drive to the Loop in Chicago? We can deliver that today. Okay, can you deliver 20 boxes to a client in Rockford? We can deliver that today. Can you deliver 12 pallets of tile to our customer in Naperville? We can deliver that today. Can you deliver a large envelope to Northbrook? We can deliver that today. Oh my gosh, I think my water just broke. Can you- We cannot deliver that. Quick Delivery Service delivers your package no matter the size. More than just a messenger service, Quick Delivery Service is a messenger and trucking service that can also provide scheduled routes for your daily delivery or your air shipment. Trucks are equipped to handle the load and provide ground level service for same day delivery. The Quick Delivery Service team of safe licensed professionals can provide quick door to door service for your special delivery. QuickDelivery.com, that's QuickDelivery.com. We deliver that today, but we don't deliver this. You can host the best backyard barbecue. When you find a professional on Angie to make your backyard the best around. Connect with skilled professionals to get all your home projects done well. Inside to outside, repairs to renovations. Get started on the Angie app or visit Angie.com today. You can do this when you Angie that. Now there's a simple, easy, and effective way to clean your nose and protect your health. It's called Navage. Navage, available at navage.com. It's 540 on AM 560, The Answer. Let's get an update on the roads. Team Hochberg Traffic Center time. Accident right lane blocked outbound at Lamont Road. You have stop and go traffic from Clarendon Hills Road as police deal with that rollover in the ditch. And flooding along 143rd in Orland Park. It's closing that street between Creek Crossing Drive to right before Wolf Road. Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan and Amy continues next. AM 560 Weather Center forecast. Breezy, chilly, periods of rain today, 44 for a high. Evening rain and the snow kicks in, a low of 34 overnight. Drizzle in 43 right now. Your next news update at 6. Chicago's Morning Answer continues next on AM560, The Answer. Now, from the Signature Bank Studios, this is Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan Proft and Amy Jacobson. 
Only the biggest stories, only the biggest guests, and only the biggest opinions. This is AM560, The Answer. Top of the morning, Dan and Amy, uh, as we uh, discussed yesterday, the uh, victory of, in the uh, Marxist primary for Cook County State's Attorney of Eileen O'Neill, O'Malley, O'Shea, Madigan, O'Connor, Walsh, Boyle, Reese. Kelly, Byrne, Cullerton, Burke. Uh, she uh, won by just under 1,500 votes over Clayton Harris. Um, and uh, I, I tell you, I was worried, but I'm not worried anymore. And you shouldn't be either. Why not? Uh, because you do not have to worry about her being tough on crime. She said so herself. I think uh, there's a lot of concern. A lot of the concern was unfair that I was going to be very hard on crime. Don't have to worry about that. I want to be effective. That doesn't mean we're going to lock everybody up. Hmm. Oh boy. Um, we're going to me- uh, getting people turned around is how she's going to measure her effectiveness. Not how many people we lock up, but how many people we get turned around. Uh, and we'll work very, very hard throughout this next campaign to make sure every a single community in Cook County understands what my positions are. Wonderful. Wonderful. Good. Whew. I was worried that something was going to change. And I know some of you were worried about that, too. And rest assured, stay the course, 1,000 points of light, wouldn't be prudent at this juncture to make a course correction. And um, uh, you've heard that right from the mouth of Eileen O'Neill, O'Malley, O'Shea, Madigan, O'Connor, Walsh, Boyle, Kelly, Byrne, Cullerton, Burke. Whew. Yeah, she gave her victory speech yesterday. and That's relief. Ooh, yeah. Well, three one two. Oh, sorry. Three one two six four two fifty six hundred Turnkey Dot Pro answer line six four six three six D A Turnkey Dot Pro text line. Right after you know she declared victory after she got the concession call from Clayton Harris the third, who really nobody knew who he was because barely campaigned. Um, she she accepted a, a thank you from Tony Preckwinkle, say you know I look forward to working with you. You're like why are you letting the fox in the hen house? Be your own Democrat, but it's it's too late. It's over. They're all in bed together. Um, this in New, New York, I love this too, because it's sort of the same attitude you have in Chicago. Uh, some uh, council human, New York City Council, uh, the Women's Caucus in New York City, mm-hmm. uh, deeply disturbed, concerned about widespread reports of attacks against women in New York City that have been confirmed by the NYPD. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Um, it turns out in New York, there's been a rash of uh, women getting randomly punched in the face as they're walking down the street or in the subway. Yeah, we we've been seeing that on social media, you idiots, for a year. Right. They're just those that group of ladies. By they're very hot, by the way, good lookers. Who they're just uh, tuning in on that. Council uh, human Amanda Farias, where are the men calling this out? Oh, it's uh, uh, it's men's fault now. Oh, you're you're interested in alpha males, are you? All of a sudden, council human. Hmm. You mean like Daniel Penny? Ooh, nice. Uh, yeah, all of a sudden, we're so interested in men speaking up. Where are the men as the protectors? I mean, that's what she's really saying. Uh, tweeting about it doesn't really do a whole lot. I don't think a, a lot of these repeat violent offenders um, are so fragile that a mean tweet is going to deter them. But you, you go ahead with that, Council Human. This is what you're you're dealing with, and this is what you'll be seeing in Chicago, too. I mean, a continuation of it. It's not like it's new. It's just a continuation that's guaranteed. But don't worry, because you'll have uh, the uh, same rap here that you've currently enjoyed. Again, nothing. Look, do not worry. Nothing is going to change. It's going to be fine, everybody. I don't care what tribe you're a member of. Everything is fine. Nothing changes. So um, Eileen O'Neill, O'Malley, O'Shea, Madigan, O'Connor, Walsh, Boyle, Kelly, Byrne, Cullerton, Burke. We'll be saying the same thing you're hearing from, uh, like Muriel Bowser in Washington, D.C. The same thing you heard from Kathy Hochul over the weekend in response to the eulogy that was offered by the widow of Jonathan Diller, the NYPD officer who was murdered in the line of duty, talking about uh, two years ago we had two other cops murdered in the line of duty. Uh, we called for change then. We're calling for change now. When change going to come? And Kathy Hochul, the governor there who was asked to leave the funeral service, said, um, you know, 
Uh, we're doing uh, good. The crime is down. Uh, people have a right to be upset, but we're on the job providing public safety. Crime is down. It's all working. We know what to do when we're doing it. And that's the same thing that's going on in Washington, D.C. Here's Muriel Bowser, the mayor of D.C., uh, speaking with Joe Kernan on CNBC. My daughter's there, and I, I'm yes. already, I'm, I'm a nervous person already. So she's in her, you know, in her 20s. I already worry. She's, she worries. She's scared. She doesn't feel safe. She, she they had a place broken into, and someone got shot on her uh, on her block. And she wanted me to just just ask you what what's the answer? Do you, do you have a plan? Is it is it broken windows that, that you got to do more of that, or, or or is it more funding for, for well, police? What, what's the plan? Should she feel safe in in D.C. Mayor Bowser? Absolutely. And, and this is this is what you should know. I just got an update from my deputy mayor and crime is down among in all categories in Washington, D.C., especially those categories <laughs> oh that God. so troubled us last year with mm -hmm. robbery and carjacking down more than 30 percent. So we've done the things that we know will reset our public safety ecosystems. Um, why didn't you do them? Ecosystems. Why didn't you do them last year then if you know what to do? I mean, Washington, D.C. was the really only major metropolitan area that saw double-digit spikes in all violent crime, including murders last year, even as crime receded a little bit, still well above 2019 percentages, which that context is often left out. But why don't you, why don't you do less? It, this is this is it. We just got I just got a report from last week and crime is down. We're, we're doing what needs to be done. Everything is going well. Um, the same rap you hear from BLM Brandon, our Brandon here, BLM Brandon Scott in Baltimore. Uh, pick a major metropolitan area with more than 300,000 people, any which one, and you'll get the same rap from their Soros funded prosecutor and their identitarian new Marxist mayor, same deal. And you'll get the same thing from this, uh, Eileen O'Neill, O'Malley, O'Shea, Madigan, O'Connor, Walsh, Boyle, Kelly, Byrne, Cullerton, Burke, too. 312-642-5600, turnkey dot pro answer line. You could also reach us on our text line, 64636, type in DA, then a quick comment. I mean, D.C. was so bad last year that even Biden's granddaughter's security detail was almost carjacked. Remember that? Yeah. Everything's locked up. I have a friend there. She can't leave her stroller. People run up and steal stuff from her stroller if it's not by her side for a second. Are you ready for something next level? I'm ready. I'm sitting down, Dan. San Francisco. This is a response. And again, it could, it will, it could and probably will at some point in the not too distant future be the CTA, be the L. They'll be passing these out at uh, L platforms. Oh, my God, what? This is outstanding. Oh, boy. We literally have lost our ability in major metropolitan areas in this country. We have lost the ability to protect ourselves. We're not even trying. We are completely defenseless. Self-inflicted defenselessness. It's the most incredible thing to witness. But it explains the election results over the last several years several cycles that it was it was difficult to understand. I, you, you don't care about your home value. You don't care about your kids' schools. But, but you say you do, but you don't. You don't act like you do. It, it finally hit me. It, you, you, it's just learned helplessness. Learned helplessness is the order of the day, particularly in metropolitan areas dominated by the new Marxists. They've won. They've, they've fully lobotomized the majority of the electorate such they cannot even bring themselves to take any steps to protect themselves or their families. Where are the men speaking up? There are no men in these metropolitan areas. I mean, not in the majority. There are some in the minority that don't have any political power, but not in the majority. There are no men. No ability to protect oneself. The Bay Area Rapid Transit. Oh, God. And San Fran what is um, providing bystander intervention cards what in the world is that cards for when you're being attacked at the train station that you can share with a bystander oh. or potentially a perpetrator that indicate that uh, you would like some help um, or a bystander can give you a card 
Uh, I see you're about to be murdered. Would you like some help? Um, or you can give a card to the perpetrator that says, I don't appreciate you attempting to murder me. <laughs> Please stop. It's not quite that, but it's basically that. Listen to these two. Okay. And they're wait. probably college educated. Two young women doing essentially a PSA for these things. Okay. And then the actual Bay Area Rapid Transit governmental PSA that's posted on their website. First, the two girls. Okay. Hello, excuse me, will we be able to have some bystander intervention cards, please? Uh, yeah, sure, hang on. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. much. So, this card over here is for when you're being harassed. It says, you got me. So, you'd hand it to somebody else, and it gives them instructions on how they can help you. If you see someone being harassed, you can also give them this I got you card, which gives them instructions on the back to find the BART police or call someone or more instructions on how to be safe. I really appreciate these cards because they gave me a, a concrete way to deal with an unsafe situation. I'm not very equipped to deal with them on my own. And so these cards give me a sense of community and a sense of support. Especially for young college students and for youth, I think these cards are really accessible. It just gives a very easy way to either help someone or to ask for help without having to do much. If everyone has one, then we'll just be able to support each other so much better and feel safer. Could you please stop beating me with a hammer? I'm trying to read this card and decide whether I want some bystander intervention or not. Oh, my God. Don't harass me cards. Hopefully they'll have time enough to whip it out. Oh, wait, wait, but before you hit me on the head with that pipe, here is my card. Oh, now we can exp- uh, come to the uh, uh, you're, you're giving cards to hand to assailants. This is not making any sense. And and also bystanders and victims right. while they're being assailed. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to see the government's take on this because that was, you know, a feel good like with a the nice theme music behind like everything's well. Everything's all well and swell here in San Francisco. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, there is a caveat that the girls left out, and that's why you have the government to make sure that, you know, uh, every detail is included. You know, they've run the traps. These are the people who know what they're doing, okay? So sometimes there's a little gap in implementation between the experts, the Bay Area Rapid Transit, and then just the, you know, the pedestrians, the the rabble that uh, uses the trains. So this is where you have the government come in and offer their own PSA to make sure you have a holistic understanding of the program. On BART, we look out for each other. Intervene if you see sexual harassment. It is more common than you think. Sexual harassment is any unwelcome sexual conduct. It could be invasion of personal space, inappropriate touching, grinding, groping, exposure of genitals, sexual advances, and public masturbation, bystander intervention is a common tactic used to help prevent or interrupt harassment or violence. The bystander intervention approach is about centering the person impacted, their feelings, their needs, and their experience. We want to equip you with the knowledge, skills, and tools needed to effectively and safely help prevent sexual violence. Bystander intervention includes four steps. Number one, assess the situation. Does the harasser have a weapon? If yes, stop. Call BART police at 510-464-7000. Can I have that number again, please? Ask another bystander for support. You can say something like, Hi, my name is Halima and I see what's happening. I think it's wrong. Can you help me by taking a video or a picture (laughs) or by calling the BART operator using the intercom at the end of the car? Number three, Approach the targeted person and ignore the attacker. Make sure that they know you're here to help. You can say something like, Hi, my name is Halima and I'm here to help you. Make sure to ask for their consent and permission. You can say something like, Can I sit with you or stand next to you? Number four, offer assistance. Offer options to the targeted person for how you can support them. You can offer things like, We can move to another car if you'd like or we can get off at the next station and I can wait with you. 
or if you'd like to report this to BART police, I'm happy to support you and be a witness in the report. Respect the person's wishes if they say no and they are okay. Now, I want to make this very clear. This method is not advisable if the harasser has a weapon of any kind. Oh my God, I mean. <laughs> I, sw I swear joke? to God. Is this an April Fool's joke? Just it, is not, it is not the Babylon Bee. It is not a Phil Hendry bit. That is right from the Bay Area Rapid Transit website. So, um, uh, uh, excuse, excuse me, me um, <laughs> that man who's masturbating on you, is that upsetting you? I, I, I want to get your verbal permission to assist you. Now, now but do you I, want I, me to videotape it in case? What are, what are your feelings about this guy uh, that looks to be uh, unhoused grinding on you or your adolescent daughter? Is that something that is making you uncomfortable? Here, um, here's a card. If you could check the box, which indicates your feelings on the matter. Oh, here I, I'm here to intervene. I'm not paying attention to you, attacker. You're just going to have to wait your turn. I. I, I I mean, I. It really is just um, clown world. It, it just it's it's so beyond that. It, it the the words uh, do not come easily. But it it really it, it is learned helplessness. Please victimize me. I mean, it, it is you're just you are just um, saying to predators. No resistance. Yeah, keep going. There will be no resistance. Because I understand you're a victim, too. Let's be victims together. Bob and Waukegan. Yeah, they should just pass out uh, T-shirts or sweatshirts, depending on what the weather's like. Every time you buy a ticket to uh, get on the uh, the tram there or whatever, uh, just say, yeah, I accept help or I don't accept help on your on your sweatshirt. And that's the only thing you can wear while you're riding on it the entire time mm -hmm. so that uh, you don't have to carry the little card and ask anybody. Just carry the, you know, print it on the back of the sweatshirt so somebody behind you can, you know, read the whole thing and, and help yeah. you out. And then ignore you. Uh, exactly. Um, yeah, right. T-shirt ideas. Um, please put your penis away. Yeah. That just to yeah, just sort of to set a baseline for your uh, commute. Uh, quickly, Monica and Lyle. Hi. I was just going to say, uh, before I got on the phone with you guys, I told my husband, why does this remind me of the society in Demolition Man? You know, yeah. politely go up to criminals and say this and this and this. And another thing with the term newcomers, somebody must have watched the movie Alien Nation or saw the TV show because that's what they were called, newcomers the aliens in those in the TV show and film. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good call. Thanks for the call, Monica. Yeah, a little of foreshadowing of cultural surrender a couple of decades in advance of the actual surrender. All right, that's where we'll start at 606. But now let's head straight into that newsroom. Here is Mike Scott. Rideshare drivers and food delivery di drivers targeted in South Austin. WIND Chicago News Time, 6 o'clock. Bond saying, quote, I've just posted a $175 million bond with the sadly failing and very troubled state of New York based on a corrupt judge and attorney general who used a statute that was never used for this before. The case was a fabricated election interference con job so bad for New York where businesses are fleeing and violent crime is flourishing. The 2024 Republican presumptive nominee originally owed $454 million, but an appeals court cut the bond by more than half. The judge in Donald Trump's criminal case about hush money and business records expands a gag order to stop attacks posted by Trump online against the judge's daughter. Hunter Biden's request to dismiss tax charges against him is rejected by a federal judge in Los Angeles. The president's son's case is scheduled to go to trial June 20th. Oregon Governor Tina Kotek signs a bill recriminalizing drug possession. The new law ends a voter-approved experiment which made the personal use and possession of drugs such as cocaine heroin, and meth, punishable only by a ticket and a maximum fine of $100. Measure 110, which was approved by nearly 60% of Oregon voters in 2020, 
called for money from the state's recreational marijuana tax to be used for addiction services. But the distribution of funds were slow, and the setup of new treatment systems were hampered by the pandemic and the growing fentanyl crisis. The new law makes personal use possession punishable by up to six months in jail. Kevin Uretsky. Fox News. Six international food aid workers and their Palestinian driver are reported killed in an Israeli airstrike in Gaza. The Israeli military says it's investigating. America's listening to Fox News. Forty-three degrees in Chicago. Six oh two on AM five sixty. The answer and good morning, everyone. I'm Mike Scott. The Northern Illinois man charged with killing four and injuring seven others by stabbing, beating, or driving over them is expected back in court today. A judge in Rockford is expected to consider prosecutors' request that Christian Soto remain jailed. More calls for residents uh, urging Village of Dalton Mayor Tiffany Henyard to step down. Tensions flared last night during heated confrontations at last night's Village Board meeting. Meeting had to be adjourned early on account of disruptions both inside and outside Village Hall, as you will hear. Trustee Jason House. Well, the meeting was adjourned because we have to have enough space. So we have to, uh, the Open Meetings Act requires that, the, uh, that we have enough space for everybody to get in. Uh, because of that, I feel we have a lot of outrage going on out there, and we want to be able to provide the space to people that they are looking for. Residents are upset over the lack of answers they're getting regarding the misuse of village funds, lawsuits, and potential cover-ups. Monday afternoon, the Chicago City Council met with only one item to consider, Byron Sigcho Lopez. Several of Sigcho Lopez's colleagues called the meeting to try and strip the two-term alderman of his chairmanship of the Housing Committee. The Democrat Socialist did appear at a highly controversial event. That vote failed. Chris Taliaferro, who spoke out against Sigcho Lopez, says he's had several meetings with him and accepts his apology. Yes, we do have a right. We have a First Amendment right to do a lot of things, but... There are times when we have to recognize that exercise of that right, the exercise of that right may not be best for the people. In earlier business Monday morning, police and fire committees successfully advanced an ordinance allowing shot spotter technology in individual wards. Alderman David Moore introduced that measure. It's the responsibility of the duly elected alderman to secure as many resources as possible to uplift and protect the community. The ordinance doesn't specify how ShotSpotter would be funded. It goes before the full city council on April 17. Hawks over the Bulls, 113-101 last night. Baseball, Cubs shut down the Rockies, 5-0, to open their set at Wrigley Field. Shota Imanaga had nine strikeouts in the win. Braves blow out the White Sox, 9-0 last night. Sox uh, fall to 0-4. The news, a service of Del Bacchio Marchetti Group of At Properties, Christie's International Real Estate, experts in the northwest suburbs and Chicago. With over $800 million in sales, you'll get the most value for your home. Call 708-828-0000. Again, 708-828-0000. And a check of traffic and weather is on the way next on AM560. For the past eight years, AM560 has welcomed Dennis Prager to Chicago for a night of cigar smoking and great conversation. And this year, on Thursday, May 23rd, we welcome Dennis back for one final cigar night. Presented by Control Point Engineering, join Dennis, Dan Proft, and Sean Thompson for a night you won't want to miss. Tickets are on sale now at 560theanswer.com slash cigar. That's 560theanswer.com slash cigar. Sponsored by Blue Star Security. From breaking news and weather across the country to insight from the brightest minds in conservative opinion, it's Salem News Channel, home to the biggest shows on TV, like Brandon Tatum weekdays at 6 p.m. Eastern, followed by Charlie Kirk at 7. Join SNC, where facts are sacred, critical thinking is celebrated, and the pursuit of truth is unwavering. Watch Salem News Channel free now on Zumo Play. Learn more at snc.tv slash Zumo.
As a local business owner, you get called every week by marketing companies. We get it. We have hundreds of satisfied customers. Here's what a satisfied client recently said. Open enrollment is going great. We're hitting record numbers. Thank you so much for this report. It really is amazing to see how the marketing is really shaping our enrollment around the city. If you're a local business and ready for the next step, visit SurroundChicago.com right now. Our experts are ready to help you take your marketing to the next level. Visit SurroundChicago.com today. Hey guys, Donald Trump Jr. here. Let me ask you this. Does inflation feel worse than what we're being told in the news? That's because the official inflation rate doesn't tell the whole story. Since January 2021, the cost of living has increased by 17.9%. You can't get that money back. But what you can do is stop your losses today. How? By diversifying your savings into a gold IRA from my friends at Birch Gold Group. When you're done, your money will be parked in a tangible asset with a proven history. To see how it works, get your free info kit on gold IRAs by texting the word PROTECT to 989898. I trust Birch Gold. They provide an easy process to roll over your 401k or IRA into gold without losing your tax advantaged status. So text PROTECT to 989898. That's protect to the number 989898 to get your free info kit on gold IRAs from Birch Gold. Message and data rates may apply. I'm Dr. Michael Strasberg. I'm a dentist. I've been practicing for 44 years. In my practice, we talk to patients about their health, their nutrition. People think of the mouth as something separate from the rest of your body, but the healthier you are, the healthier your mouth is. You know, when you're younger, your mother would say, eat your fruits and vegetables. But as you get older, that sometimes gets shoved to the side. And Balance of Nature has been one of the best supplements to fill the void in the fruit and vegetable area. When I did this, I felt a noticeable difference. I felt better. Anytime you can feel better, I don't care what age you're at, you know, that's a big plus. I don't stuff anything down, haha, uh -huh, anybody's mouth, but hey, this has worked for me. Why not try Balance of Nature? Simple, easy, take it, and it's going to help. Go to balanceofnature.com and get 35% off plus $10 off any additional sets as a preferred customer by using discount code CHICAGO. 608, let's check the roads. Team Hochberg Traffic Center time. And we'll start in Hanover Park. An accident reported Lake and Ontarioville Road. A structure fire in the Gold Coast. A still in box uh, fire in a four story building on State Parkway south of North Boulevard. Orland Park flooding along 134th uh, Street before Wolf Road. And delays continue on the Stevenson outbound. Accident left shoulder right near Route 83. Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan and Amy continues next. Your official Chicagoland weather forecast in the AM560 Weather Center with Steve Williams. Rain breezy and chilly today, high 44. Clouds and breezy, rain and snow showers around this evening. Low tonight, 34. Snow and rain, windy and cold tomorrow. Could pick up about an inch, the high tomorrow at 39. I'm Steve Williams on AM560, The Answer. 43 right now. Chicago's Morning Answer continues next on AM560, The Answer. Now, from the Signature Bank Studios. This is Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan Proft and Amy Jacobson on AM560, The Answer. Top of the morning, Dan and Amy. Uh, I got this uh, email yesterday from a listener. He uh, poses a question that I'll pose to you all. All right. He writes, Dear Casey... <laughs> Uh, he writes, Dan, uh, what is behind what appears to be a very intentional silence of one Barack Obama on the border crisis? I'm surprised that both the woke media as well as conservative media hasn't been able to get a peep out of the former president about the intention to flood this country with illegal aliens. Your thoughts? Question mark. So what would you say to uh, our listener friend who is curious as to why Obama has been able to get away with being silent on this issue, despite appearing recently in a very public setting at uh, Radio City for a big Biden fundraiser. 
312-642-5600, turnkey.pro answer line. 64636-DA, turnkey.pro text line. It's very curious, because in 2007, Obama on immigration was very, you know, very strong against it. You know, we need secure borders. We have to have a legal and fair immigration process, yada, yada. I, everybody thought this whole time he's been pulling, running the show for Biden. He still lives in Washington, D.C. Valerie Jarrett, still nearby, lives in the west wing of their house. Um, I don't know why he has been so quiet and silent about it. Maybe because he's the one that's plotting and planning. Possibly. Well, um, I mean, the, the, I'm surprised the woke media and conservative media hasn't been able to get a peep out of the former president. Well... Well, the the D.C. press corps is not going to press him on the issue because it stand in front of his house. (laughs) Well, well, they're not even going to ask him about if they're standing next to him at Radio City because that may be awkward. It may make him uncomfortable. If he has something to say on a particular topic, we'll wait until he's good and ready to say it. We're not going to press him on anything. We're in his service. So that should be obvious. I mean, the same goes for Biden. You think they're going to compare and contrast things he said in 2007 versus what he is or is not saying today? any more than they do so for Biden. You know, um, it wasn't so long ago, and on conservative media, I mean, that that should be fairly obvious too, no access. And the left doesn't have to answer calls from, you know, the Washington Examiner or the Daily Caller or conservative talk radio, and they're not going to. So it's pretty obvious why there's no pressure on him to, have to say anything he doesn't want to say. Um, And, you know, to the extent that he is providing advice and counsel, he would say something very similar to what Biden said during the State of the Union address, where he, you know, you sort of do this pantomime of being serious about border security. You blame Republicans as being obstructionists and we want to do something in a bipartisan fashion and it's passed the Senate. We got the Senate. Well, it didn't pass the Senate, but we got the Senate on board. This sees in, in transigent MAGA cultists in the House. I mean, the whole rap that you saw and heard uh, during his State of the Union address, that's, that's Obama redux. Same thing he did on pick an issue, any issue, even as he was this great uniter, we're told. By the way, the Trump cultist thing, too, is so funny. Uh, David Harsani made this uh, salient point in podcast I did with him over at AmericanGreatness.com. Um, which, you know, the president of a party, the president, you know, it, it normally dominates the party. A president or a former president dominates the party with which he is affiliated. This is nothing new. And frankly, uh, Trump dominates the Republican Party today, uh, much less than previous presidents of both parties, including the aforesaid Barack Obama, who was treated as the one, like the savior, Messiah. Yep, the uh, but coming. he treated himself as a Messiah, and so did Democrat Obama cultists for uh, eight years. So, I mean, please give me a break with this cultist nonsense. It's it, the, 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 the cult of personality politics afflicts both sides. I don't like it. But, I mean, it's attended to both sides, and it's nothing new. People are so ridiculous, MAGA cultists. Anyway, um, speaking of uh, immigration and going into the way back machine and remembering fights of yore that never particularly went anywhere. I mean, they sidelined a few people, but they never went anywhere in terms of larger public policy that would uh, be in the interests of stewarding America into a positive place in the future. And thus, here we are. Remember this episode? I was just looking at this. We were looking back at. Bill Clinton's State of the Union address in 95, talking about illegal immigration and all the things that um, Schumer and Pelosi have said over the years. Mm -hmm. I mean, just these two, Schumer and Pelosi, they don't get enough of attention. Pelosi and Schumer on uh, illegal immigration, not so long ago. While we need to address the issue of immigration and the the challenge we have of uh, undocumented people in our country, we certainly don't want any more coming in. Illegal immigration is wrong, plain and simple. Until the American people are convinced that we will stop future flows of illegal immigration, we will make no progress on dealing with the millions of illegal immigrants who are here now and on rationalizing our system of legal immigration. When we use phrases like undocumented workers, 
We convey a message to the American people that their government is not serious about combating illegal immigration, <laughs> which the American people overwhelmingly oppose. Mm. If you don't think it's illegal, you're not going to say it. I think it is illegal and wrong. People who enter the United States without our permission are illegal aliens, and illegal aliens should not be treated the same as people who entered the U.S. legally. Uh, that's an interesting right. classic of Sh- uh, Pagliacci Schumer at Georgetown. We played it before, but boy, it's just fun to remember those bad old days when Pelosi and Schumer were xenophobes, remember? Oh, yeah, now they're such hypocrites. 312-642-5600, turnkey Dapro answer line. You could reach us. Also on our text line, which is up and running, 64636, type in DA, then a quick comment. Uh, a favorite uh, from the Wayback Machine, too, is this episode that doesn't get talked about uh, nearly as much as some of these uh, uh, speeches. But remember the Clinton years when he had two attorney general uh, nominees in a row, women, get sidelined because they had problems with illegal immigrants working in their homes. Oh, that's right. Nannies and housekeepers. Yes. Yeah. Kimba Wood and Zoe Baird. Yep. And uh, this was um, Joe Biden back in 1993, mere 30 years ago when he was in his late 70s. <laughs> and he... In his uh, first years in office, yeah. Uh, not his first no, year in that's office. that's right. He's been... 50 years in office. Excuse yeah, his 79. Whole life, his whole career is No, 79, 72, uh, 73, yeah. Um, <laughs> so anyway, uh, Biden, you know, is um, Senate Judiciary Committee. And uh, uh, I think the, I think it was Senate Jew that took up this matter, but regardless, in the Senate. Mm-hmm. And um, he had some pointed comments for Clinton's AG nominee at the time. She didn't make it. This just in. Zoe Baird. The committee and the public, as we've discussed, has to be assured that you are, without exception, uh, um, going to be willing to enforce the law. And the immigration law falls under your responsibility. It happens on your watch as attorney general. And I believe it's important you have an opportunity to explain in even greater detail than you have in your opening statement uh, uh, the various circumstances uh, surrounding this hiring. Wow. Hardliner. Well, things have changed. It was back when he had brown hair, too, and seemed more sensible than he is now. Yeah, a lot of uh, reform xenophobes roaming around in the Democrat Socialist Party these days, isn't it? Isn't it, isn't it uh, interesting? And it's certainly worth noting. So it's the whole wrong then or wrong now. So the the Joe Biden, the Bill Clinton, the Pagliacci Schumer, the Pelosi, what would they have said back then to uh, an El Paso or about an El Paso judge who released 220 people that were arrested on riot charges for bum rushing law enforcement at the border in El Paso the other week? Yeah, he did it on Easter Sunday, actually. Just strange. Yeah. Just yeah, let them all out. Sunday. Yeah. Uh huh. People what, in El what, Paso were. Pissed. What would what would the the Nancy Pelosi and the Chuck Schumer and the Bill Clinton and the Barack Obama and the Joe Biden of a few, not even a few in some cases, decades ago? What what would they have said? I wonder. Three one two six four two fifty six hundred Turnkey Depro answer line six four six three six D A Turnkey Depro text line. What would they have said of New York spending? Uh, well, Uncle Sam. Spending you, you. Uh, more on illegal immigrants than on American military. Sick. Uh, this is a piece over at Fox News from Bess Blackburn uh, doing the math for us, which is helpful, on what uh, the benefits are in New York for people that are in this country illegally as compared to, say, troops, military men and women from New York who are deployed. Uh, She is the editor-in-chief of political philosophy at the Liberty Journal. And uh, she uh, notes that illegal migrants are given, are about to be given prepaid debit cards, which we talked about last week. Each person gets about $360 a month, which for a family of four would be about $1,440 per month. An average military family is suffering from a deficit of 18 
$1,860 over a period of nine months, while a similarly sized illegal migrant family has been given nearly seven times more by virtue of illegally occupying the country. Uh, yeah, it's, um, it's, it's really something. What would they say? The Military Times, enlisted soldiers receive 452 a month for, in basic allowance for sustenance. While deployed, those soldiers suffer 399 in monthly meal deductions, even if they don't use base dining halls. The only entitlement for the deployment itself, which offset this deduction, was $195 a month of assignment incentive pay. So the current system results more in more than $200 lost each month for a deployed soldier and their family. While soldiers with dependents receive an additional $250 per month in family separation allowance, this does not begin to compensate for the actual additional costs of child care, for example, for one-parent households. So thus the eighteen sixty less cumulative during a nine-month deployment than they would have had had they not been deployed over the same nine months, which on its face, that alone doesn't make sense. And then when you layer in a comparison to people in this country illegally, then it just becomes offensive. But what are you going to do? I wonder what uh, the Nancy Pelosi and Pagliacci Schumer and Barack Obama and Joe Biden of a decade or two ago would have said to a Boston uh, using veterans housing to house illegal immigrants. I mean, this after we had that uh, episode a couple of months ago where a, a disabled combat veteran was thrown out of his nursing home to make room for veterans. Mm -hmm. The veterans home at Chelsea, for example, in Boston will become a safety net site for migrants where beginning May 1st, they will have to prove they are working to wean off government assistance by applying work authorizations, learning English and searching for permanent residency. Sure, they will. Who's going to enforce that? Maura Healy, the governor? Michelle Wu, the mayor, sure they will. They just care. like, just like, just like migrants are being evicted in Chicago. Sure they are. They're not going anywhere. Did you see the five families that were evicted, or they weren't even evicted? They don't call it an eviction, Dan. They're being rehoused. Exactly. They had more stuff than I own. They, like, they were filling up their trucks at the Broadway Armory. I'm like, where'd you get that? I mean, like, good for them. Oh, that's a really nice uh, nightstand you got there. And then they moved all their stuff, and they, Lord knows where they went. But, you know, it was well, a that's photo the, op. The so, point is, right, they're not right. going anywhere. They're not. They are not going anywhere. They're they are your permanent, new neighbors. They are permanently here, your new Biden buddies. That we're paying for. Yep. Nick in Addison Park. In Edison Park. Addison Park. Wow. Edison Park. <laughs> that's hey, it. Nick. Yeah, not only have the Democrats evolved on illegal aliens but uh bruce jenner is uh actually a birthing person yes there's been a lot of evolution over the last couple of decades yeah man it's interesting the parallel bruce jenner from the cover of a wheaties box to a chick mm -hmm. and uh yeah joe biden barack obama chuck schumer nancy pelosi yeah Make yeah, everybody spin sometimes, right? Well, they just, you know, again, they, they change their costume to fit the time. And also, you know, that, that, that sort of presupposes they're captive to events. No, they're part of a movement that has a, a direction. And so they continue to push, 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 and then they form at the back of the parade once the front of the parade has come together so that they will continue to be right where they need to be in terms of public opinion. They're driving it. They're driving it. They're moving with it. They're moving. We're moving. We're moving. We're moving. All right, stop. Pause. Okay, we're moving. We're moving. We're moving. That's what they do. Yeah. And uh, here the right stands around looking up at the stars, completely befuddled that uh, what was in front of them is now three miles past them. Yeah, but while we're sleeping, they're plotting on ways to advance their issues and their policies and take us down. Tom and Oswego. Good morning, Dave and Amy. I, I wish President Trump and the, all the Republicans would run just incredible amounts of commercials with these sound clips. Just let the American people, the ones that don't know what's going on, just what they thought years ago as compared to today. Yeah. 
Yeah, and it's not so many years ago. No, I I agree. Well, thank you. I mean, this is, you know, uh, people can decry social media, but it's uh, Zamastad. It's a way to get information out, to share information quickly. So it certainly has its utilities, and uh, that's going to be um, necessary. By the way, it's not just, you know, here again, um, outsourcing all of this to the Trump campaign or the Republican Party or candidates for office. Uh, everybody listening has access to social media. So you're free to take what uh, we platform and share it to look around and find other things that you think are useful or persuasive or important that people should know and share it. So, you know, some people don't have the time or the energy to walk precincts and all that, and some do and they should. Um, but you can still be an information source within your circles of influence. There's just no excuse not to be. Dan and Amy, Chicago's Morning Answer. This is The Morning Show. More Chicago radio listeners are choosing. This is Chicago's Morning Answer on AM560, The Answer. When you're serious about your concealed carry training and education and are ready to learn from an active police officer with a teaching degree, check out Illinois Concealed Carry Training in Midlothian. You'll learn safe, responsible firearm use, home defense planning, conflict avoidance, situational awareness, and how to remain physically, morally, and financially safe in the event you must use your firearm in self-defense or the defense of another. Weekday and weekend classes available. I'm Sergeant Gary Carr, police firearms trainer and the owner of Illinois Concealed Carry Training. We'll arm you with what really counts, knowledge and training. All concealed carry curriculums are not created equal. This may be the single most important decision you'll ever make for yourself and your loved ones. Choose between three and 16 hour classes that are available both weekdays and weekends. We are your one stop for concealed carry classes, fingerprints, and legal defense plans. Register for a class today and get 10% off class fees with promo code AM560. Visit IllinoisConcealedCarry.com. That's IllinoisConcealedCarry.com. Oh, we had some nasty spring storms last week. And how'd your basement do? If you had water in your basement or crawl space, you don't have to live like that. And in between storms is the best time to call our good friends at Permaseal. Roy Spencer started the company back in 1979, and it's still family-owned and operated, and they stand behind their work. Here's what you do. Call this number. They'll come over and give you a free estimate. The number to call is 800-421-SEAL, 800-421-7325, or online at permaseal.net. This is Carol platt Lebow for townhall.com. There's been no accountability from all the so-called experts who handed down ruinous mandates during the COVID pandemic. But finally, the FDA has at least been forced to walk back some of the snarky misinformation it spread about ivermectin. The agency will remove and never republish Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook posts suggesting that ivermectin, an inexpensive medication some doctors use to treat COVID, is only for animals. It's happened thanks to three brave doctors who sued the FDA for interfering with their right to practice medicine. Although the lower court dismissed the case, the Fifth Circuit Appeals Court reinstated it, noting, quote, the FDA is not a physician, unquote. Indeed, it's not. With that, the FDA settled the lawsuit and agreed to remove the posts. No government agency has any business telling physicians how to practice medicine. Let's hope they've learned their lesson. I'm Dr. Michael Strasberg. I'm a dentist. I've been practicing for 44 years. In my practice, we talk to patients about their health, their nutrition. People think of the mouth as something separate from the rest of your body, but the healthier you are, the healthier your mouth is. You know, when you're younger, your mother would say, eat your fruits and vegetables. But as you get older, that sometimes gets shoved to the side. And Balance of Nature has been one of the best supplements to fill the void in the fruit and vegetable area. When I did this, I felt a noticeable difference. I felt better. Anytime you can feel better, I don't care what age you're at, you know, that's a big plus. I don't stuff anything down, uh aha, anybody's mouth, but hey, this has worked for me. Why not try Balance of Nature? Simple, easy, take it, and it's gonna help. Go to balanceofnature.com and get 35% off plus $10 off any additional sets as a preferred customer by using discount code CHICAGO. At Signature Bank, going the distance for business banking customers is what we do every day. We understand that business owners have a strategic mission, a drive to succeed, a plan for growth, and don't have time to wait for a bank to respond. 
With Signature Bank, you not only have a banking partner that has roots right here in Chicago, but our decisions are made locally too. Signature Bank knows that when you have a question or problem about your business, you want answers. You need someone who will pick up the phone or respond to your text. You need someone who is always there for you. That's Signature Bank. We are a team that wants to get to know you and your business. Want to be Signature Bank's next success story? Give us a call today at 773-467-5630 or visit us online at SignatureBank.Bank. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. AM 560, The Answer. All right, coming up on Chicago's Morning Answer. Uh, we talked to her a bit yesterday, but I guess we'll have Amy weigh in on LSU coach Kim Mulkey and the uh, smear job that Jeff Bezos' little rag did on her. Her response and also uh, some responses from pa- uh, parents of players at LSU, despite the fact they went down to Iowa last night. That's at 6.30. And why did they walk out during the playing of the national anthem? But now let's head into the newsroom. Here's Mike Scott. 632, 42 degrees this morning. A 12-year-old student has opened fire at a secondary school in southern Finland, killing one, seriously wounding two other students. Heavily armed police are cordoning off the lower secondary school with some 800 students in the city of Vanta, just outside the capital of Helsinki. Britain this morning says a plane carrying Defense Secretary Grant Shapps had its satellite signals jammed as it flew near Russian territory. The Royal Air Force jet carrying Shapps and other officials experienced the GPS jamming when they flew close close to the town of Kalingrad on a flight from Poland. A temporary channel is now open around the site of the Baltimore Bridge collapse It's only for essential vessels and clearing debris. A man is in custody after ramming his car into security gates at an FBI office in Georgia. There are no injuries. Agents of bomb techs are checking the vehicle as a precaution as part of our our standard operating procedures. Officials say the suspect tried to follow another vehicle to get through the gate and enter that facility, but security measures stopped him. Cyprus says ships are turning back from Gaza with 240 tons of undelivered food aid. It comes after at least five aid workers delivering food into war-torn Gaza were killed, some say after an Israeli airstrike. Meantime, top Iranian military commander was targeted in an Israeli airstrike on the Iranian embassy in Syria. Iran State TV confirms the commander of the Revolutionary Guards was killed. It's cheaper to rent a home than buy one in the nation's 50 largest markets. Realtor.com reporting the average increase in prices to buy a starter home was 60% higher than rent. The Northern Illinois man charged with killing four people and injuring seven others by stabbing, beating, and then driving over them is expected back in court a judge in Rockford is expected to consider prosecutors' request that Christian Soto remain jailed pending trial. More calls from residents are urging the village of Dalton Mayor Tiffany Henyard to step down. Tensions flared during a heated board meeting last night. Meeting had to be adjourned early on account of disruptions both inside and outside Village Hall. In business Monday at Chicago City Hall, the Fire and Police Committee successfully advanced an ordinance allowing shot spotter technology in individual wards. Alderman Peter Chico says they need the technology. Look, we're down thousands of officers that we're not getting back. We have to look at other ways to save lives. We have to look at other ways to develop intelligence, and this is a key component in that. The ordinance does not specify how ShotSpotter would be funded. It goes before the full city council on April 17. One person is dead after a shooting on the south side yesterday morning. Police responded to the 700 block of East 104th in the Roseland community around 11.45. A 64-year-old man was shot in the uh, head and later died. 
Convicted killer Drew Peterson was back in a Will County courtroom yesterday seeking a new trial. Peterson was convicted of killing his third wife, Kathleen Savio, in 2004. He's also behind bars in a murder-for-hire plot trying to kill Will County State's attorney, James Glasgow. Hawks beat the Bulls 113-101. to Cubs shut out the Rockies at Wrigley 5 nothing, And the Braves blew out the White Sox 9 to nothing. The news a service of Crosscom Public Adjusters. Crosscom will help you get what you need and have coming to you. They have helped thousands. CrosscomPublicAdjusters.com. A check of traffic and weather on the way next on AM560. For the past eight years, AM560 has welcomed Dennis Prager to Chicago for a night of cigar smoking and great conversation. And this year, on Thursday, May 23rd, we welcome Dennis back for one final cigar night. Presented by Control Point Engineering. Join Dennis, Dan Proft, and Sean Thompson for a night you won't want to miss. Tickets are on sale now at 560theanswer.com slash cigar. That's 560theanswer.com slash cigar. Sponsored by Quick Delivery Service. The future of medicine is here at QC Kinetics. QC is the nation's leader in the most exciting revolution in pain management we've seen in decades. Regenerative medicine. If you're tired of achy joints, if your joint pain is keeping you from doing what you love, you need to call QC Kinetics today. Surgery, steroids, drugs, these are no longer your best options. Regenerative medicine at QC Kinetics is transforming lives with innovative treatment that delivers lasting results. QC Kinetics is under the leadership of National Medical Director Dr. Michael Scheinkup. Dr. Scheinkup is a pioneer in this field with 20 years of clinical work, research, teaching, and publishing. He wants to get you relief with a needle, not a knife. Call QC Kinetics now for a free consultation. Appointments now available on Saturdays. Call 312-809-5955, 312-809-5955. Again, that's 312-809-5955. When life ends, your legacy begins. Ensure your legacy lives on at Catholic Cemeteries of Chicago with 47 locations throughout Cook and Lake Counties. Take advantage of 0% financing. Lock in today's prices and safeguard yourself against rising inflation. Visit CatholicCemeteryChicago.org or call 708-236-5490 to schedule a free consultation today. In a big city like Chicago, we all know that there are challenges, especially for children. But behind the staggering statistics we often hear about, there are real kids who need support to overcome these barriers. That's what By the Hand Club for Kids is all about. By the Hand Club for Kids is a faith-based nonprofit organization serving children in some of Chicago's most under-resourced neighborhoods, places like Austin, Englewood, Cabrini-Green, and Oak Hill Gardens. By the Hand Club for Kids runs after-school programs for children that nurture their minds, their bodies, and their souls. Right now, By the Hand Club for Kids is serving nearly 1,800 children, and we need your help. Your one-time gift of just $120 will provide a day of after-school programming for two children. Or you can become a club champion and give a monthly gift of just $40, which will provide for eight children in the next year. Give that gift today by going to bythehand.org slash radio. That's bythehand.org slash radio. From breaking news and weather across the country to insight from the brightest minds in conservative opinion, it's Salem News Channel, home to the biggest shows on TV, like Hugh Hewitt weekdays at 6 a.m. Eastern, followed by Mike Gallagher at 9. Join SMC, where facts are sacred, critical thinking is celebrated, and the pursuit of truth is unwavering. Watch Salem News Channel free, now on Zumo Play. Learn more at snc.tv slash Zumo. Don't let a cold, sinus infection, or allergies ruin your day. Breathe easier, sleep better, and feel healthier with Navage. Visit Navage.com, Walmart, Walgreens, CVS, or a store near you. 640 on AM 560. The answer, let's get an update on the roads. Team Hochberg Traffic Center time. Starting in Niles, Lehigh and Tui, an accident. Hanover Park, Lake and Ontarioville, an accident. Orland Park, it's flooding, closing 143rd near Wolf Road. Delays on the express and tollways will start on the Bishop Ford inbound. There's an accident inbound at 103rd. Stevenson stop and go traffic Harlem through Kenzie. 
and delays on the Eisenhower on the outbound side. Overturned truck outbound approaching Sacramento. Traffic, a service of Lowe's. Your savings just keep coming with members-only offers. Learn more about our new loyalty program at Lowe's.com slash my Lowe's reward. See Lowe's.com slash terms for details. Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan and Amy continues next. AM 560 Weather Center forecast. Breezy, chilly, periods of rain, high 44, an evening rain or snow shower, and a low of 34. 43 right now. Next news at 7. Chicago's Morning Answer continues next on AM 560, The Answer. Now, from the Signature Bank Studios, this is Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan Proft and Amy Jacobson. If you're looking for the latest news, insight into what it means, and the sharpest opinion, there's only one station in Chicago where you can turn, and it's this one. We're AM 560, The Answer. Sports and politics and sports and politics and sports and politics and intersection. Arrogance and ignorance, arrogance, ignorance, and arrogance and ignorance. Intersection. Uh, I want to get to uh, LSU coach Kim Mulkey again, since she was the target of this uh, smear job by uh, Jeff Bezos's Amazon Post phony news outlet, according to the standards set by the D.C. Press Corps and the Chicago Press Corps. Phony. Because Jeff Bezos runs it. Jeff Bezos owns it. Mm -hmm. um, so it's phony. I say it's phony. Uh, they say outlets I'm a part of are phony. If, if you don't like the person who owns it, then you just say they're phony. You don't have to address the substance of the coverage. Actually, we will. They won't. Anyway, I digress. Before we get to that, though, I do have to um, play this clip from yesterday's White Sox game. Mike Scott's been reporting the uh, White Sox are easing into the season. Oh, okay. It's just a slow roll, Dan. Yeah, yeah, easing they're in. Just warming up. You gotta you gotta peak at the right time. So I, yeah, they I are the only that. they're the only team in the American League without a win thus far. But again, it's sort of the false sense of security they're creating with respect to their competitors. Uh, but this happened uh, during the uh, a game that I think was called because of the slaughter rule yesterday, oh. and I th I think uh, that's what a lot of the Sox players and staff uh -huh. thought, which is why they weren't around during the game. Truist Park. On April 8th. So how about this? We have a delay because there is no first base coach right now for the Chicago White Sox. What? Which is quite incredible. Something that usually happens at a Little League game. It's supposed to be Jason Bourgeois. And the, so apparently he's not down there. They're yelling anybody. Anybody can coach first base. Can Wiley Ballard coach first base? He didn't get down there. I didn't know that was there a no rule fans that you had to stands, have a first so. base coach. <laughs> That's not an option. Get the concessions, guy. I have that. never. This is a new one. I've yeah. never. What about Southpaw? We're so Southpaw. Send out South somebody. <laughs> Ronnie Wu will arrive. Oh no, he's a. Meanwhile, he's Tyler Matzik is waiting to enter the game here in the bottom of the eighth after Dylan Lee pitched. I don't really know, know why they need a first base coach. They don't have any base runners. Hey yo. So, um, oh. but I tell you, you know, say what you want, but. Uh, Where's a Legee when you need one? <laughs> you know, they banned the Legee boys from coming to Sox games oh. after their little run-in with an umpire a decade oh, ago or yeah, so. Yeah, just a little. When they uh, stormed the field and ran uh, it. I mean, there sure is an accident. There's a little, it's a little bit of a run-in. It's nothing that uh, is unusual yeah. in Bridgeport. And, and, uh, and, and when you need them, uh, you, want, you know, when you, when you want them, they're not around because, well. Anyway, so um, Sox are firing out of the gate. This is a team that is definitely worthy of a billion dollars of your money for a new stadium. Okay. Uh, Kim Mulkey and LSU. So I guess LSU lost to uh, Caitlin Clark and the Hawkeyes yesterday. Yeah. You don't know the score. 80, no, excuse me, 94 to 87. And they were tied at the half, and right. then Caitlin Clark came back in the third quarter and scored four three-pointers. She was brilliant. Well, I just scored, love her. It's a fun scored four three-pointers? Well, a total of nine for the game, but I'm saying in that third quarter, and then they got ahead, and that was Scored it. Th okay, boom goes the dynamite. <laughs> it's just such a like, so awkward way to – it's not how you okay, say Okay, then it. how would you say it, Dan? Buried four three-pointers. Hit four three-pointers. Stuck. 
Four, this three, you sound like Rahm Emanuel talking about oh the Bears. Uh, we're very excited that the Bears are three and zero to start the season. I, <laughs> I am far from Rahm Emanuel. Rahm Emanuel did not play high school basketball. He was a yeah. dancer. He was a ballerina. I'm well aware yes. of his forays into the dance community. Then he went to an all girls college, Cheryl Lawrence. <laughs> Um, so uh, anyway, yes. um, so this Kim Mulkey, we talked about this yesterday. There's this controversy. You mentioned it about um, LSU not being on the court at the beginning of the game for the anthem. Yeah. Why not? Well, apparently that's not unusual for LSU. Oh. Uh, Coach Mulkey uh, explained. I'm not saying this is uh, good form. She may want to consider changing this, but she said it was nothing intentional. Her team has a routine that they go through before the, start, before, the, before the start of a lot of games. In point of fact, when LSU played Iowa for the national championship last year, they were also not on the court for the national anthem, but they're not sending a political message. A local reporter who covers, like a reporter who covers the LSU sports team said they're often not on the floor because like at 12 minutes before tip, they're you know, it's part of their routine. pregame routine. They're back in the locker room doing whatever they are doing mm. to. Uh, so anyway, so it, but it, it wasn't, and and that I'm that gonna doesn't Kim, help their bad boy image, though. I mean, that like, come on, the world is watching image. this game. Well, th- when you have reporters writing articles, sweethearts versus the villains, that's a, feeds into the bad boy image, in my opinion. Well, first of all, the girls. Well, um, uh, there yeah, are no dir- genders anymore. Uh, they're dirty debutantes, yes. according to yeah. Well, that got uh, rescinded. We talked, we t- t- tackled this yesterday, but. Um, yeah, but that's a, that was a smear job. And so, again, I don't think Kim Mulkey cares about feeding into whatever uh, invented narrative the the sports press corps, which is to say the D.C. press corps uh, adjunct in the sports world. I don't think she cares very much. I think she's got the right attitude about it. My sense from just hearing her talk uh, over the weekend about the L.A. Times column that was based on the the Amazon Post story, which I think is a smear job. That um, she's pretty tough. She, I think she's very old school. I love her. I mentioned yesterday, like, like she, she, she seems to me she would fit in in the old Big Ten that featured Bobby Knight and Judd Heathcote and Gene Cady. Yep. Um, and um, I, yeah, I like the cut of her jib. Yeah. And I, I think so. Yeah, I agree. She should, she should make sure the players on the court for the national anthem just. just but 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 I don't think I don't think there's any real controversy there. I don't think she is of that nature, and I don't think her players are. And I thought this was interesting too. One of the moms that uh, rallied to her defense, in addition to the players who take basically the same attitude as the coach, because she's not trying to be anybody's friend. She's an authority figure, and she's trying to provide some yeah. guidance to young women, which is what coaches should do. But this is a mom of a player on LSU who's got a cool name, Flo J Johnson. I love her. F L A U apostrophe J A E. I've always wanted an apostrophe in my first name. D Dan. <laughs> Dan. I could do a Dan. <laughs> I could do that. Daniel. Daniel. I can I. It's just. It's. It's more. It has more like know. rhyme and and. There's more just Daniel. sort of jade de vivre, jade de vivre to it. Uh, anyway. Um, Flo J. Johnson's mom on Coach Mulkey and all this. Oh, she picks fights with the players and she's this and she's that. And um, because she and Brittany Griner didn't get along at Baylor, kind of, sort of. Although Brittany Griner's comments were interestingly pretty muted compared to the uh, hyperventilation that f- was featured in the rest of that uh, Amazon Post story. And then, of course, some nitwit over at the LA Times who just sort of cut and pasted and and came uh, with his moral indignation because that's what the mob and the media do. It's kind of crazy because you, this day and time at a certain age, I just feel like people should know if you haven't ever met a person, how could you judge them? You know what I mean? And these are 40 and 50 year old people on the internet like throwing daggers at a woman they've never even spoke to, which is very weird to me. I can see kids doing it, but adults seems like at this point in your life, you should know, dang, I never even really met this woman. I gave her a chance before I just judged her. I've met Coach Moki. Everything Coach Moki told me or everything I asked her about my kid, she kept it real. You know what I'm saying? And when Flaude say she's an OG, to be able to navigate the different situations that may come with players and parents and coaching and being a coach and just dealing with so much. And I feel I trust her with my kid. 
Honestly, I do because she not gonna baby Flaje. She gonna make her a woman. When she leave here, she yep. gonna be a woman. You know what I'm saying? And I respect that because I'm not I'm not easy on Flaw. You know, I was hard on her. Like anything you want in life, you gotta go get it. You gotta go fight for it. It's a million kids out here trying to do what you're doing. So what's gonna separate you? That is the best compliment a parent could ever give a coach. Yeah. Is what she just said. You know, she's not going to go easy on her. And she's going to make her a better person. You want to create good citizens, good people. And I, I, I love that. And I, I, I love, I've known, I'm not known, but I've known of her for years, obviously. But she's just, she's true to herself. She's true to play. And she doesn't care what people say about her. I mean, she cares to an extent. And she'll wear, she wore pink bow well, she didn't... one time. She didn't care it. about she didn't care about what was said about her, but she cared about what her, was said about, about her players, players and yes. that's where she focused her attention, which is which is right and proper. I mean, she seems like uh you know, uh you know, to borrow an Angie Dickinsonism, big bad mama. Well she does kind of look like Angie Dickinson. I mean, she's a grandma. My grandma didn't look like that when I was growing up, I can tell you that. She's yeah. oh yeah. That's a, great. The flamboyancy, like she's just true to herself. She's very she's Louisiana. She's, you know, in your face. She's well, a tough coach, and she's successful. And also, she knows why she lost last night. It's real simple. Generational player uh, that you're not going to stop. Caitlin uh, But she had two players that scored 21 and 18 today. And you can't allow that when you're, you've got your hands full with Clark. You only lose on the scoreboard. But if you learn from a loss, you'll be back here next year. Iowa deserved a win. They they made the plays, and uh, they have Caitlin Clark. Thank you, Coach. You're welcome. Yeah, I was like uh, Zach Eady carrying Purdue across the finish line over the weekend. Um, yeah. I also like that Flo J. Points. Johnson, um, her mom, her mom is one of the reasons Flo J. Johnson is on that great LSU team, too. It's almost enough for, to make me care about women's basketball. It's not See? quite, but it's almost enough. Well, we got you kind of to care, right? No. Nah. Nah, yeah, I think you're caring. Carl Northlake. It was a good game oh, all the way through the first half. I hated seeing Angel Reese go down because I wanted a good competitive game. And then they wrapped her ankle and she was able to play just fine. I, I was tickled on that. But well, she fouled out in the like, fourth quarter at the beginning of the fourth. Yeah. Well, yeah, the game was already over, though. If, you know, and Caitlin Clark just killed it. You know, five minutes in the third quarter was over. Not only is Caitlin Clark. Uh, <sighs> An astute player. She is a great coach. She knows the game. She's uh, put her name in to go pro, not only to be a player, but she's going to uh, get a head coach job, too. She might as well be a player coach right out of the gate, like Lou Boudreaux or something. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, I mean. But I love yeah. the Angel Reese, Caitlin Clark saga because that's what this is going to happen. I mean, Angel Reese is deciding whether or not to go pro because she could be a senior next year or just go into the WNBA. But I bet they'll pit her against a team that's, you know, competitive against the Indiana Fever, and then, boom, yeah. it'll blow up like Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark. You know, one's yeah. a villain, one's America's sweetheart. No, it won't. You it, think they'll, so? they'll, go, they'll go pro, and then they'll disappear, I just like know. the WNBA has. Uh, yeah, I don't think so. Sorry. Right, we'll and, and by the and way, I'm not going to make any bets, but I'm just saying that that, can, that would be I a just, marketing tool to promote the WNBA. Well, I mean, sure. Obviously, Caitlin Clark by herself is a marketing tool. But yeah, like a, a bird magic kind right. of. Yeah. Jordan. Lambier. Isaiah or whatever. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Get a mask on Angel Reese. So she, you know, get her. Yeah. Right. Huh? Um, but can I just say one thing about yes, this? Um, I mean, it's fine if um, people like. Uh, women's basketball and stuff, and, and I, I appreciate that Caitlin Clark is a great player, and so is Angel Reese for that matter. Mm -hmm. But um, please don't tell me that I like the women's game better than the men's game because they're more fundamentally sound. Please, pl please stop saying that. If you're a person who says that, please stop saying that because it's not true. It's a ridiculous thing. It's pandering, especially when men say it. It's just not true. If you say that, you know nothing about basketball. Okay. It's just that's not too much to ask. It's just like calling her the all-time leading scorer in college basketball history instead of Pete Maravich. I, I don't think I'm asking too much. Stop saying ridiculous things. Dan and Amy, Chicago's Morning Answer. This is Chicago's Morning Answer. Your show keeps me alive during the week. There's nobody I'd rather listen to between 5 and 9 in the morning than you guys. On AM 560, The Answer. 
From breaking news and weather across the country to insight from the brightest minds and conservative opinion, it's Salem News Channel, home to the biggest shows on TV, like Hugh Hewitt weekdays at 6 a.m. Eastern, followed by Mike Gallagher at 9. Join SNC, where facts are sacred, critical thinking is celebrated, and the pursuit of truth is unwavering. Watch Salem News Channel free, now on Zumo Play. Learn more at snc.tv slash Zumo. Don, can you read this email for me? Of course. Jeez, I wish they could do something for your eyesight. Ugh, me too. But you heard what they said. There's nothing we can do. When vision loss can't be corrected with glasses or surgery, and hope seems lost, turn to Spectrios Institute for Low Vision. Spectrios doctors specialize in the treatment of vision loss related to eye diseases, such as macular degeneration, glaucoma, and diabetic retinopathy. There is hope. Supported by science with personalized rehabilitation plans, occupational therapies, and access technology at Spectrios. Talk to a patient service its manager. They'll walk you through the program. Spectrios takes BCBS and Medicare insurance. They also have grants for qualifying patients and offer a seeing is believing children's outreach program. Go to spectrios.org located in Wheaton in a building that says it all. The House of Hope. That's S-P-E-C-T-R-I-O-S dot org. Spectrios Institute, the head, heart, and eyes approach to better vision. Remember to keep Spectrios Institute, a 501c in your estate or legacy planning. AM 560, the answer. That sound means it's time for in depth history with Frank, the history teacher from Arlington Heights, because there's nothing new in this world. It's just the history you don't know. Today's a doozy. Uh, it connects a 10th century Chinese dynasty with the Biden administration. Only Frank from Arlington Heights can do that. Take it away, Frank. Good morning. Around the time of the Sung Dynasty in the 10th century China, the practice of foot binding became commonplace. Forced on young girls, their feet were broken and tightly bound to deform them permanently so they would be less mobile and stay in the home and not be corrupted. Many of these women would never leave their homes. Not to be outdone, medieval European societies, too, through the oppressive manorial system, created hyper-localized economies as the peasant serf was bound to the land and never left his or her village in a typical 30-year life. So both Orient and Occident actually had 15-minute cities a thousand years before the (laughs) WF's New Age elitists could dream them up. Recently, the Biden regime's edict on tailpipe emissions also portends a future of reduced mobility for Americans, as more production of electric vehicles is a stated goal of the now eight-year American gas plan. The problems with EVs are legion, limited range, long charging times, limited chargers, heavier weight, higher price, and insurance costs. Sales of them have stalled as a result. But the green energy demons at the EPA know best, so it looks like these cars will be produced, creating huge misallocations of resources and capital. It's hard to take our elites seriously, though. They certainly can't hold a candle to the ancient and classical Mayan elites of cities like Tikal, Palenque, and Chichen Itza, because their sun god demanded bloodletting from the population on a consistent basis. And their royalty had to participate, too, as some rituals required blood of the highest cosmic value, blood taken from areas of their bodies that produce the seeds of future kings. That's quite a standard that somehow I don't think will be lived up to today. Well, don't speak so soon uh, on that. <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't foreclose that possibility. Uh, and uh, I didn't hear an opinion on the uh, breaking of feet and binding them, so I don't... Is that... Oh, mm. hor- you know, well, you know, a lot of the um, you know, wealthy families in, in China at that time, yeah. it was a it was a good thing for them, and it was supposed to be beautiful. So small feet was in back then. Frank. Yeah, <laughs> small feet were no, it, it was. was in. Yeah. All right. Seven oh seven. We'll talk to Andy McCarthy on Trump trials. Killed, saving lives. I'm Chris Foster, Fox News. The Israeli government says there will be an independent investigation into the deaths of seven food aid workers in Gaza, one a Canadian-American citizen. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu calls it an unintended military strike. The charity World Central Kitchen says an Israeli airstrike hit its aid convoy as it travelled along a coastal road in Gaza. Images show a van carrying the organization's logo with a charred hole on its roof. World Central Kitchen CEO says she's heartbroken and appalled. In a statement, the Israeli Defence Forces say they're trying to understand the circumstances of what they call this tragic incident. 
Jonathan Savage, Fox News. A gag order in former President Trump's criminal case in New York is expanded to stop him from attacking the judge's daughter online anymore. Trump's accused of falsifying business records about hush money payments to former adult film star Stormy Daniels. And he's posted now a $175 million bond to partially cover the business fraud judgment against him, preventing New York State from seizing assets before he can appeal. Florida Supreme Court upholds a six-week abortion ban in the state and approves abortion and marijuana measures to be on the ballot for Florida voters in November. The first measure would protect the right to an abortion. After the state, in back-to-back years, passed tougher restrictions, parents would be required to be notified before a minor could undergo the procedure. The second measure would determine whether or not to allow companies that grow and sell medical marijuana to sell it to adults over 21 for any reason. That essentially would make recreational marijuana use legal. The state had argued against placing either issue on the ballot for voters to decide. Kathleen Maloney, Fox News. The owners of the cargo ship that took down the Key Bridge in Baltimore in a court filing deny any fault or neglect and seek a cap of nearly $44 million for any lawsuit payouts. America's listening to Fox News. 42 degrees, uh, fog and gray skies with light rain showers crossing the area at 702. Good morning. The northern Illinois man charged with killing four people and injuring seven others by stabbing, beating, and driving over them is expected back in court today. A judge in Rockford is expected to consider prosecutors' request that Christian Soto remain jailed. A man is in critical condition after being shot through the window of a home in the city's Morgan Park neighborhood. The victim was standing inside the living room of a home on South Elizabeth. When police say bullets entered through a front window and hit him in the arm. More calls from residents urging Village of Dalton Mayor Tiffany Henyard to step down. Tensions flared during a heated confrontation at last night's Village Board meeting. Meeting had to be adjourned early on account of disruptions. Trustee Jason House. Well, the meeting was adjourned because we have to have enough space. So we have to, the Open Meetings Act requires that. uh, that we have enough space for everybody to get in. Uh, Because of that, I feel we have a lot of outrage going on out there, and we want to be able to provide the space to people that they are looking for. Residents are upset over the lack of answers they're getting regarding the misuse of village funds, lawsuits, and potential cover-ups. Trustees were also set to override Henyard's veto of an official investigation into her alleged misconduct. Chicago police are investigating after five rideshare and food delivery drivers were robbed in the same block over several weeks. All of the incidents happened in the 5100 block of West Washington. Former Judge Eileen O'Neill Burke celebrated her victory in the Cook County State's Attorney primary race with her supporters at a plumber's local in the West Loop where she kicked off her campaign. Very much an up and down roller coaster ride. And my husband rode that roller coaster with me every day. And sometimes he was screaming, sometimes I was screaming. And uh, screaming about what? He was screaming like, oh my God, when is this going to be over? It was a razor tied race, but O'Neill Burke ultimately prevailed, narrowly beating opponent Clayton Harris, the third. Former Dolphins and Indianapolis Colts cornerback Vontae Davis, who played at the University of Illinois, was found dead in his South Florida home Monday. Now, police say no foul play is suspected. Cause of death has not been released pending autopsy results. Hawks cruised by the Bulls, 113-101 last night. Baseball, Cubs shut out the Rockies 5-0 to open their series at Wrigley Field, while the Braves blew out the White Sox 9-0 in eight innings. White Sox still winless at 0-4. The news, the service of Dan and Amy 24-7. Enjoy uninterrupted programming from Dan Proft and Amy Jacobson around the clock all day, every day. Listen now, DanandAmy247.com. A check of traffic and weather on the way next on AM560. Brandon Tatum is hearing the same old story. What did that ghostwriter do with the information Joe Biden shared with him on his laptop? What did he do after you were named special counsel? He slid those files into his recycle bin on his computer. Tried to tried to destroy the evidence, didn't he? And here we go with Biden doing the same suit warmed over. Are we witnessing another 
Hillary Clinton. The Officer Tatum Show. Weeknights at 8, right before Sean Hannity at 10 on AM560. The answer. Imagine what your future looks like. Is the picture a little blurry? Hey, it's Sean Thompson here for Alpha Wealth Group. When we look ahead, we're visualizing where we want to be. And for retirement, that can be hard without a written financial plan. Tom Fortino of Alpha Wealth Group can help you bring your retirement picture into focus. For decades, Tom has been crafting customized financial strategies. His goal is to help you protect your savings, grow your wealth, and create an income strategy you cannot outlive. If you're nearing or already in retirement, it's time to get your plan on paper. So bring your readers and let's take a look at it closely. Call Tom at 630-934-1855 and schedule a complimentary retirement consultation. There is no cost. There is no obligation. This is a chance to get a clearer view of your retirement. The number again is 630-934-1855 or visit alphawealthgroup.com. And listen to the Alpha Wealth Hour Saturday mornings right here on AM560, The Answer. Advisory services through Retirement Wealth Advisors, LLC, and SEC Registered Investment Advisor. Insurance and annuities offered through Alpha Wealth Group, licensed in Illinois. Hey guys, Donald Trump Jr. here. Let me ask you this. Does inflation feel worse than what we're being told in the news? That's because the official inflation rate doesn't tell the whole story. Since January 2021, the cost of living has increased by 17.9%. You can't get that money back, but what you can do is stop your losses today. How? By diversifying your savings into a gold IRA from my friends at Birch Gold Group. When you're done, your money will be parked in a tangible asset with a proven history. To see how it works, get your free info kit on gold IRAs by texting the word PROTECT to 989898. I trust Birch Gold. They provide an easy process to roll over your 401k or IRA into gold without losing your tax advantaged status. So text PROTECT to 989898. That's PROTECT to the number 989898 to get your free info kit on gold IRAs from Birch Gold. Message and data rates may apply. In the fast paced rhythm of life, where demands can be relentless and time is precious, Prioritizing your well-being can be hard. Not to worry. Balance of Nature fruits and veggies supplements are convenient and easy to add to any schedule. Paired with eating more fresh produce, regular exercise, and a positive mindset, Balance of Nature fruits and veggies supplements can help you keep your rhythm. Whether it be excelling in your day-to-day -day or just living in the moment, start your journey with Balance of Nature supplements. Call 1-800-246-8751 or go to balanceofnature.com to get 35% off your first order as a preferred customer with free shipping and our money back guarantee. That's 1-800-246-8751. Go to balanceofnature.com or call 1-800-246-8751 and get this special offer by using discount code CHICAGO. Seven oh eight. Let's get an update on the roads. Team Hochberg Traffic Center time. We'll start on the Kennedy this morning, where it's one hour solid between Austin and Montrose. And right now, again, we'll call it fifty nine minutes O'Hare into the Burn Circle Interchange. Ike on the inbound side, already an hour and five from 390 into the old post office. Watch out on the outbound side. You have an accident approaching Sacramento. Dan Ryan inbound jamming up in the Express 51st up through the Stevenson. Bishop Ford in uh, inbound. Port of an earlier accident swept out of your way, but delays remain on the Bishop Ford between 115th and Cottage Grove. Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan and Amy continues next. AM 560 Weather Center forecast with Steve Williams. Breezy, chilly rain today, the high 44. Cloudy, breezy rain or snow shower this evening, followed by snow at times late tonight. Little or no accumulation, low 34. Snow and rain, windy and cold for tomorrow. Could see about an inch, the high 39. I'm Steve Williams on AM560, The Answer. 42 right now. Chicago's Morning Answer continues next on AM560, The Answer. Now, from the Signature Bank Studios. This is Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan Proft and Amy Jacobson on AM560, The Answer. Tom.
top of the morning, Dan and Amy. This freaking FBI, man. Have you seen these um, posts that are circulating of the FBI coming and knocking on people's doors because they want to talk to them about social media posts? Yeah. Uh, is this, and this is not an April Fool's joke, right? Uh, it's not an April Fool's joke. Uh, this is, it's, it's so disturbing. Uh, and since they've destroyed their credibility, the FBI has, uh, with so much of the population, and I'm included in that. Um, I sorry, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not giving them the benefit of the doubt here of their good nature to to p keep everybody safe proactively, but of course operating within the bounds of people's constitutional rights. I don't believe it. I don't believe them. I don't believe in the leadership, and I don't believe in the directives coming from the leadership. Uh, here is an example of what I'm talking about. This is a guy who uh, goes by the Twitter handle Misfit Patriot. He's in San Antonio. FBI shows up to his door. Uh, he apparently wasn't home, but they're speaking through the intercom and, you know, his, in his uh, the front of his building. Yeah. And then uh, and then he you know, comments on his subsequent conversation, phone conversation with the FBI. Take a listen. Are you home? We'd, uh, we'd like to speak to you for a second. No, I'm not home. What is this in regards to? Uh, this is, if you'd like, I can, uh, I can meet you or uh, I can meet you. So that's the full recording that I have. Now, um, right after that video cut off, I gave him my number to call me because it was very choppy. As you can see, I was repeating stuff. So I talked to Mr. Highland on the phone. And by the way... As far as I know, this is an actual FBI agent who works with the actual FBI, and this is a LinkedIn page showing that FBI agent who works in my city. So, conspiracy theorists, most likely that's the FBI, okay? People don't make badges and show up to random people's houses and then record themselves talking to them impersonating agents. Just side note. Now, I would never drop a recorded phone call with the FBI, even if I had one, so you're going to have to take my word for this next part. I, I talked to this agent on the phone. The agent said that they were at my house, and the only thing that they could tell me is it was in regards to my social media. I asked them if it was about a specific post on my social media, and the reply from the agent was, no, we looked at your social media and found nothing illegal. We are just here to check off a box. It's procedure. To which I replied, you need to talk to my attorney. I have told you guys, be prepared for anything. And that includes the FBI coming to your house. So my attorney reached out to them five seconds after I got off the phone with them, which was five minutes after I talked to them. They did not answer. They have not returned my attorney's call to this date. We have no further information. I have also reached out to more than one journalist, and they have reached out, as far as I know, and have not heard back either. So, the FBI is showing up to people's houses that aren't committing crimes and trying to check off boxes. Let me know what you think of that. I'll let you know what I think of that. Uh, I think it's chilling. Uh, at, at best. And, and by the way, so before uh, those on the left who um, believe the ends justify the means and are happy to suspend the constitutional rights of people with whom they disagree, uh, ignorantly believing this will never boomerang back on them because they're saving democracy. Let me give you another example from the other side, as it were. You know, this guy goes by misfit patriot, you know, probably right of center, probably pro-Trump. Well, uh, Rala Abdeljawad of Stillwater, Oklahoma, is not. She uh, claims uh, she was told by FBI agents who showed up at her door. Facebook handed over screenshots of her posts, which was public, so Facebook didn't need to hand over anything. Uh, this was, and apparently she uh, had posted some things that were anti, you know, Israel in some fashion. Uh, okay. Um, like most of Chicagoans and our aldermen, but okay, go on. Right, right, yeah, Siglo, Siglo Lopez, right. Yeah. Uh, Facebook gave us a couple of screenshots of your account, said one agent wearing a gray shirt, said, you know, in this video. She replied, so we no longer live in a free country and we can't say what we want. The agent said, no, we, we totally do. 
That's why we're not here to arrest you or anything. Oh, that's nice. We do this every day, all day long. It's just an effort to keep everybody safe and make sure nobody has ill will. What? Make sure nobody has ill will. That's the job of the FBI. When did the FBI become traitors of our country? Well, the, wh- when did they become policing people's right. feelings and inter uh, personal? Uh, the status of their interpersonal relationships, uh, whether you feel good about uh, the people you're communicating with or you don't, or your leadership of the country or you don't, or the particular people involved in a particular issue or event. or you... Why are they focusing are, are, on... Are, okay. are, are, uh, to keep everybody safe, make sure nobody has ill will. She said, all I've done is exercise my right as an American citizen on a public social media platform with my personal opinions. Yeah, I mean, that's not a. They should not focus on feelings. They should focus on real, violent threats that are made on Facebook. For uh, more on this, we're pleased to be joined by Andy McCarthy. Uh, he, of course, is a former chief assistant U.S. attorney for the Southern District of New York. That's Manhattan. Contributing editor, National Review, author of the bestseller *Ball of Collusion: The Plot to Rig an Election and Destroy a Presidency*. Andy, thanks for joining us. As always, appreciate it. Well, it's my pleasure. So, um, you know, um, does my pretty vociferous antagonism in the direction of the FBI warranted here, or am I um, taking it too far? Well, uh, yeah, I think that the FBI has to deal with the fact that um, they've made a record over the past decade plus of some very bad politicized behavior and therefore people don't trust them anymore and you know when you have an organization that um, is trustworthy you can do a lot of things uh, and people won't be too upset about it uh, compared to what you have now for example um, back after 9-11 agents were very aggressive and I uh, encouraged them to be in trying to gather information about threats to the United States. And that involved uh, talking to a lot of people who may have been involved in uh, suspicious behavior or with suspicious groups, uh, maybe associated with radical mosques, um, but who they didn't have probable cause had committed any crimes. And they would try to chat them up and get information. And at the time, they had a pretty good reputation for doing that the right way. And everybody recognized that we had a national security threat. We had just gotten attacked and 3,000 people had been killed. Um, but, the, you know, if you flash forward 25 years, we're in a very different environment now. Um, they've been very politicized over the last number of years. I think they've been actively used. I, I'm not sure if it's uh, everybody in the FBI, but there's certainly some offices in the FBI which have been actively used in promoting a democratic narrative that right of center people are like a step away from becoming domestic terrorists. Uh, I think that's picking up steam because part of the, the Democrats don't have, you know, Biden doesn't have a record that's pleasing to the country to run on. So what they're going to run on is Trump and they're going to run on Trump and the Capitol riot. Um, So the kind of stuff that we're seeing is uh, I think, going to be stepped up. And if you thought that the Bureau was acting in good faith and that they wouldn't go out and have a chat with someone unless they really thought that there was a crime or a a threat of force problem, uh, you know, if they had that kind of credibility, I think people would give them a lot of rhythm to do this kind of thing. But since they don't, um, you want to know what's their probable cause for going out there to, to talk to somebody like that. And if they don't have it, then why are they allowed to do that? Well, I mean, it's particularly when they use phrases like, you know, we're just here to keep everybody safe and make sure no one has ill will. I'll tell you what, uh, agent, I have ill will towards you and the agency you work for. How does that grab you? So are you going to be checking boxes at my place uh, in, in a routine basis because I'm uh, I'm 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 all welled up with ill will towards uh, federal law enforcement agencies that uh, behave in just the way you described. I mean, that that the whole attitude is um, Orwellian, frankly. Yeah, but I, I don't disagree with you, but 
Um, this has been going on for a long time. People complain about it. Uh, and every year, their budget increases. Yeah, well, I hear you. Here, uh, people, people like me say, you want to stop the behavior. Yep. The only, yep. The, the only language they understand in Washington is slash their budget and put severe limits on what they're allowed to do. Absolutely. So there's a lot of gas bagging. People go on television and whinge and whine about it. But it, when it comes time to, to sign off on the omnibus uh, multi-trillion dollar budget, the next thing you know, the Justice Department's gone from being a $30 billion agency to a $40 billion agency. 100 percent. 100 percent. Well, so, so to that end, I mean, um, I, and, and I, I don't want to do this to be punitive because I don't want to be as venal as I'm accusing them of being. But what about something like uh, when you talk about uh, reining in their scope and the powers that uh, they can access under color of law? What about Section 702 that Christopher Ray is uh, pumping for renewal and at least some uh you know, constitutional oriented senators in the Republican ranks like Lee and Rand Paul are balking at that. Yeah, well, I think they're uh, I don't think they're very constitutional on this. I like Lee and Paul, but I don't you know, when they start to talk about the Fourth Amendment, my head starts to explode. Um, 702 is about gathering foreign intelligence against people outside the United States, non-Americans who want to attack the country or might want to attack the country. And we don't give the FBI that authority because we think they're great guys. We give them that authority because the country – we have people out in the world who want to attack the United States and mean ill toward Americans, and we have to guard the country against them. And when they abuse those powers, the thing to do is to hold accountable the people who abuse the powers. It's not to take the powers away. We, we don't give the powers because we want to give the powers. We give the powers because – uh, we have people who but, hate America and want but, to but, attack our country. But Andy, if I could interrupt, but but as you, you're referencing the almost 300,000 times they abuse that power. And the problem is that you don't have a Justice Department that will hold them accountable. So how do you get a Justice Department that holds accountable abuses of power like we've seen under 702? And I guess the answer would be um, make more judicious to- choices at the ballot box. But but I mean, is there anything else? Well, I think that, to my mind, I I think that you need to use the civil rights laws affirmatively against government agents who violate people's actual civil rights. So it's Mm. not enough to, like, uh, you know, report to the FISA court that we overstep the bounds of the minimization instructions in uh, in the 702 orders that get signed off on. The people who do that have to be held accountable. They have to be publicly identified. The FBI doesn't seem to fire anyone. If they do, they do it very <laughs> yeah. quietly, so no one feels like there's any ever any vindication. And I think people who, um, you know, when government agents uh, go to social media companies and cross the line and get them to suppress people's speech, or if they intimidate people, uh, you know, with respect to their speech or behavior, that's got to be investigated under the civil rights laws. If, if it was a Democratic Justice Department as it is now, and there was an inkling that the police were doing something that the left disapproved of, they would be all over it with a civil rights lawsuit. And I think what has to happen is you have to get a civil – you have to get a Republican or conservative government that's willing to use the civil rights laws to uphold the actual Bill of Rights – protections of of americans not just the uh, you know preferred leftist agitators all right well speaking of suppressed speech what about this gag order on former president trump i mean he had to know what was coming right well he had to know it was coming but it does, that doesn't make it right you know there the theory now this this order av was expanded now so that trump's not supposed to talk about the judge's daughter the judge's daughter is a democratic political activist he's got a absolute First Amendment right, and I think he's got a right in the trial to argue that he's being railroaded by a progressive elected Democratic DA who wouldn't have brought this case against anyone else and that the judge should recuse himself. He's got a right to make that argument. And instead, what uh, what Judge Merchan is saying is that even though the district attorney hasn't accused Trump of incitement, nor could he because Trump didn't direct anybody to do anything, uh, that – it basically, it's, uh, you know, Trump has such power that when he says things, 
there are crazies out there who will act on it in an intimidating way, and therefore it's too punitive for people who are in the system, <laughs> like judges and prosecutors, to do their jobs because now they have to worry about members of their family being intimidated. Trump didn't, Trump didn't pick out Merchant's daughter like out of the sky for no reason, right. just randomly. She's a democratic that. political activist who, who works for Democrats who define themselves by how much they loathe Trump. Like Adam so Schiff. And, and judge on this case. Yeah, and 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 right. They're so intimate. They're so intimidated by what Trump will do and what he says that uh, his daughter makes money by sending out email fundraising and her her company by sending out email fundraising asks based on what Trump has said, and that's how she helps to fundraise for Adam Schiff and other Democrat clients. I mean, give me a break, as you said. The specifics of it are even worse than she's just some. It's not like she's just some political operative in the ecosystem. She, she traffics in things that Trump says to raise money from the base for candidates that, as you said, have built their career around trying to put Trump in jail and take away his stuff. I mean, give me a br- so So in terms of the recusal, I mean, it's not going to happen, I suppose, because why would this thing not stay as wired up as it is? But, I mean, do you think that the judge in this case, because of uh, his uh, daughter, in a, in, a, in, a, in a real justice system, would recuse himself? That would be the right and proper thing to do? It would be the right and proper thing to do. It's, it, it doesn't even have to, you don't have to prove actual bias. It's just a, you just need to show an appearance of impropriety. Right. And here you have a, it looks to me like you have bias all over the place. A good judge would want to get off this case so that the, you know, the integrity of the process wasn't questioned. Um, but this whole thing is, it, it, look, Trump is entitled. You may not believe that it's rigged. And he may not. He may get get acquitted, I, or he may, he may get convicted. I don't know. But he's allowed to to make the argument, especially given that he's running for president. You know, these courts. The, uh, to me, the most offensive thing about this is they think that there's nothing else uh, that's a higher interest in the American government than the administration of justice and their their little trials, mm-hmm. and that that's more important than uh, you know the First Amendment interest in an election. That's decided by the public rather than partisan prosecutors. And Trump, because he is the major party candidate of one of the of the president uh, of one of the two parties, um, that has to be respected by the court. He's allowed to run for president. The Constitution allows him to do that. So, to my mind, there's very it is very simple. If the courts are worried about the administration of justice of justice in these cases. Put them off until after the election's over. If you're not going to put them off till after the election's over, fine. Then Trump should only be limited in what he can say by the way the First Amendment limits you, which is he can't incite violence and he can't defame anyone. And if he does that, he can be sued or prosecuted. But otherwise, there shouldn't be. The courts are creating this situation by forcing these trials to be scheduled prior to the election. That's what the problem is. They've they've forced this situation. Andy McCarthy, former chief assistant U.S. attorney, Southern District of New York, contributing editor, National Review, author of the bestseller Ball of Collusion, the plot to rig an election and destroy a presidency. Thank you, as always, for your insights, Andy. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Thank you. And he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. Before you see it on TV, share it on Facebook or read about it in the paper. Hear it here first. This is Chicago's Morning Answer on AM560. The Answer. Oil investments involve a high degree of risk, and actual results may vary. Oil and natural gas keep going up as the Russia conflict escalates. Get in on the next major oil boom now and help the U.S. with your patriotic investment that can potentially pay you monthly income for up to 20 or more years. That's the sound of a producing oil well and the sound of a smart investment. If you're an SEC-accredited investor and have at least 25,000 liquid now, you can take advantage of Encore Energy's projects and a huge tax savings for this year. If you invest in oil and natural gas, you're allowed to write off nearly 100% of your investment in the first year. Goldman Sachs is projecting oil to go up to $100 a barrel, and natural gas is the fuel of the future and trading at record prices. Call 800-287-6691. Encore Energy is a major investment. 
investor and experienced operator in its core area of operations. Call now and learn how to deduct 100% of your investment and create 20 or more years of potential monthly income. Call 800-287-6691. That's 800-287-6691. Listen, with everything happening in our world today, it can all feel so complicated. But maintaining your home shouldn't be. For 53 years, Tyson Roofing has been primarily serving DeKalb, Kane, and Ogle counties with industry-leading quality and professionalism, priding ourselves on always using our employees and never subcontractors. In times of uncertainty, you can trust your most important asset to us. Tyson Roofing is a third-generation family-owned and operated company in DeKalb County. We've been a community standard, specializing in residential exterior maintenance since 1971. If you're in the market for a new roof or repair, fresh siding, or need to update your gutters, check us out online at TysonRoofing.com. Spelled T-H-E-I-S-E-N Roofing.com. Or call us at 815-758-8998. That's 815-758-8998. Or TysonRoofing.com. 815-758-8998. AM 560, The Answer. All right, coming up on Chicago's Morning Answer. At 7.37. Yeah. The uh, Inspector General's report for CPS is out. 446 cases of uh, sexual abuse, sexual misconduct. Get any coverage of that? We're going to cover it, as we have previously. 446 cases. Ted Dabrowski, Wirepoints, wirepoints wirepoints.org, has some comments and profiles on some of the more disturbing cases. We'll start there with him at 737. But now let's head into that newsroom. Here's Mike Scott. 732, 42 degrees, rain and fog this morning. A 12-year-old student opened fire at a secondary school in Finland, killing one, seriously wounding another. Both the suspect and the victims were 12 years old. The minimum age of criminal liability in Finland is 15, which means the suspect cannot be formally arrested. Thunderstorms are moving across the southeast and the Ohio River Valley today, bringing the risk of tornadoes, high winds, and damaging hail. Storms hit parts of the country from Texas to St. Louis, three tornadoes in Oklahoma. A man in custody after allegedly ramming his car into a security gate at an FBI office in Georgia. We actually trained for this type of situation. We recently did have training to prevent this that we that we uh, have done before. Officials say the suspect tried to follow another vehicle through the security gate and enter the facility, but security measures stopped him. Former President Donald Trump on the campaign trail today, speaking this afternoon in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and this evening in Green Bay, Wisconsin. The Northern Illinois man charged with killing four and injuring seven others by stabbing, beating, and driving over them is expected back in court. The judge in the city of Rockford expected to consider prosecutors' request that Christian Soto remain jail pending trial. A man in critical condition after he was shot through a window of a home in the city's Morgan Park neighborhood Monday night. The victim was standing in the living room of a home in the 11,400 block of South Elizabeth around 8.30 when bullets entered through a front window. Hawks cruise by the Bulls, 113-101 in Chicago. Baseball, Cubs blank the Rockies 5 nothing to open their series at Wrigley Field. Shota Imanaga earning his first win, striking out nine. Braves blow out the White Sox 9 nothing. Sox start the season at 0-4. And then go out and sign former starting pitcher Mike Clevenger to a one-year contract yesterday. The news, a service of In Grace with Pastor Jim Scudder Jr., now heard on Sunday morning at 6.30 on AM 560. The answer. A check of traffic and weather on the way next on AM 560. For the past eight years, AM560 has welcomed Dennis Prager to Chicago for a night of cigar smoking and great conversation. 
this year, on Thursday, May 23rd, we welcome Dennis back for one final cigar night. Presented by Control Point Engineering. Join Dennis, Dan Proft, and Sean Thompson for a night you won't want to miss. Tickets are on sale now at 560theanswer.com slash cigar. That's 560theanswer.com slash cigar. Sponsored by Opum Tax Advocates and Attorney Stephen A. Leahy. It's Reveille. Even Illinoisans who thought they have seen and heard it all will likely be surprised at the continued crazy ideas coming out of Springfield. Last week, an Illinois Senate committee held a hearing to consider a bill that establishes a guaranteed income program to provide a monthly cash benefit of $1,000 to Illinois residents, including illegal immigrants. This isn't a joke. People like bill sponsor State Senator Ram Villavallum is 100% okay with a program like this. But of course, he hasn't done any math, and he has no research to back up the cost effectiveness of the program. The cost would be enormous. A rough calculation of just $1,000 per low-income family in the state would cost the state well over $7 billion per year. That such a preposterous idea got a hearing tells you Villa Vallum isn't the only problem. Everyone who sat in that committee and didn't laugh him out of the room is also part of the problem. Villa Vallum has other uses for your money. In Illinois, we already spend $3 billion on child care assistance. He wants to expand the program and provide free child care to teaching assistants and child care providers. He also wants the state to fund radical sex ed programs that teach kindergartners there are more than two genders. CPS has the program, so he is looking to make state taxpayers who reject this type of inappropriate instruction at their local school to fund it for Chicago students. In Illinois, your money is being thrown away on terrible ideas. That can change if people stop throwing away their vote on terrible politicians. I'm Jeannie Ives. To learn more, listen to my radio show Sunday from 7 to 9 p.m. and sign up for my newsletter at Breakthrough-Ideas.com. That's Breakthrough-Ideas.com. In the fast-paced rhythm of life, where demands can be relentless and time is precious, prioritizing your well-being can be hard. Not to worry. Balance of Nature fruits and veggies supplements are convenient and easy to add to any schedule. Paired with eating more fresh produce, regular exercise, and a positive mindset, Balance of Nature fruits and veggies supplements can help you keep your rhythm. Whether it be excelling in your day-to-day or just living in the moment, start your journey with Balance of Nature supplements. Call 1-800-246-8751 or go to balanceofnature.com to get 35% off your first order as a preferred customer with free shipping and our money back guarantee. That's 1-800-246-8751. Go to balanceofnature.com or call 1-800-246-8751 and get this special offer by using discount code CHICAGO. Now there's a simple, easy, and effective way to clean your nose and protect your health. It's called Navage. Navage, available at navage.com. 738, let's check the roads. Team Hochberg Traffic Center time, a service of Crosscom Public Adjusters. If your home or business has an insurance claim, Crosscom will help you get what you need and have coming to you. They've helped thousands. Crosscom Public Adjusters.com. We're going to start on the Stevenson. Big problems inbound from LaGrange Road, uh, right at, uh, in, in there to the Des Plaines River Bridge. They have emergency pothole repair ongoing right now. Two right lanes are blocked. Two big holes in the two right lanes. Flat tires on numerous vehicles. It's a mess. It's now 70 minutes in from this uh, from 355 into DuSable Lakeshore Drive on the Stevenson this morning. Checking in on the Dan Ryan. Big delays inbound. In the locals, 47th up through Roosevelt. 30 minutes in from 95th into the burn circle interchange. Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan and Amy continues next. AM 560 Weather Center forecast, breezy and chilly, a high of 44 today. Currently clouds and 42. Your next news update is at eight. Chicago's Morning Answer continues next on AM 560, The Answer. Now, 
from the Signature Bank Studios. This is Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan Proft and Amy Jacobson. Insert Democrat Socialist here. Runs the Democratic House law for 30 plus years of running. He's promising this and he's stealing that. Where can you get that kind of money? He's using your house like his own piggy bank, gang, 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 gang. You ought to know by now. You can pay off your house here in Illinois, but you can never keep up with the taxes. Oh, how it's always been the plan To have a taxpayer pay, no doubt Not a matter of if anymore, but when You're moving out I said, when you're moving out Top of the morning, Dan and Amy uh, That theme music means it's time for our weekly confab with Ted Dabrowski President of WirePoints.org All things Illinois policy related And a good piece over at WirePoints.org Uh, that finds that uh, Nickelodeon has nothing on the Chicago public school system when it comes to uh, predation on young people. Sexual abuse and misconduct cases, 2023, there were 446 detailed in the Inspector General's 2024 report, ranging from misconduct and sexual harassment to non-sexual conduct that raises the appearance of impropriety or possible grooming concerns. That's a quote from... The IG's report, uh, for example, profiled over at WirePoints, security guard sexually abused a 16-year-old student for approximately five months. In his capacity as a security guard, he pulled the student out of class to have sex in various locations in the school, such as storage rooms and janitorial closets. He also sexually assaulted the student in his car and his home. Uh, Is he in jail? (laughs) Don't know the status. Of course not. Uh, Another case, an employee of a vendor uh, after school program sexually assaulted an elementary student at the student's school in multiple locations between 2014 and 2017 when the student was 7 to 10 years old. The student disclosed three separate incidences and, uh, you know, it's all of a sexual nature. I won't get into the the, uh, details of it. The abuse took place in the school's gym and cafeteria. It's uh, disturbing. This is a pedophile, obviously. Um, where's the, where's the outcry? Um, who's, who's, who's got this story other than wire points? Where's the, uh, where's the, uh, the I team investigating? Chuck Gowdy. Uh, what about, um, uh, here we go again. Where, where are those, those do-gooding trial lawyers who protect the little people against the big corporations? Government, I thought. No. Not CPS? Parents? Uh, Father Flager. The the, the the wonderful civic elders. How about the Panjan drums at the City Club or the Economic Club? Anybody in C-Suite Chicago? No? Well, I, Just wire points? I do know one thing. If they're accused of sexual abuse or sexual assault, they still get paid, Dan, while they're at home awaiting their trial. Because the CTU worked that into their contract. Of course. And some should be in jail, from what I've been reading, thanks to wire points. Because if they did that out on the street or if they were somewhere else, say it even like at a Jimmy Rent and they molested a 7 to 10 year old, why, or a 7 year old and or a 10 year old, whatever, it doesn't matter, they, they molested them, they'd be in jail. Elementary school teacher sexually assaulted a 12 year old child in Indiana. Child between the ages of 12 to 16 in Illinois and was arrested in Indiana since the 50 years in prison. Do you know about that case? No, of course not. Why? Because teachers are supposed to be our heroes. Well, it's more than that. It's because institutions are to be protected. And CPS is to be protected at all costs. So now, for example, the Catholic Church, and I don't believe the church should be protected or CPS should be protected. Nobody committing this kind of misconduct should be protected. But you'll take notice of who is and who isn't because it speaks to an agenda. What else could it possibly be? Ted, thanks for joining us as always. Appreciate it. Morning, Dan. Good morning, Amy. Um, uh, Have you gotten a lot of inquiries uh, from uh, the uh, Chicago Press Corps, the uh, civic institutions, the uh, professional associations. You're right. 
about the Chicagoland Chamber of Commerce, uh, Teachers Union, all the stakeholders in CPS. Huh? A lot of conversation about this happening now because of those reports. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely not. And of course, we just put it out late last night, so um, they haven't had a chance to review it yet. But uh, oh, sure, you know, we did. You, we you did. did. This, you, know, this, you had a chance to. Re- you had a. Wait, you had a chance to review the IG's report. They they have the same access to the IG's report you do. Exactly. Well, you know, this thing came out, you know, in January, and um, and you know, it, it, it got just a, a dribble of attention, right, when it came out. And um, I, I give some credit to Willie Wilson because a couple of weeks ago, he he came out and wrote an op-ed. Um, you know, former uh, you know, candidate for mayor of Chicago, he came out and wrote an op-ed that, that criticized all this and said, you know, you can't teach kids when sexual abuse is, you know, is rampant. And um, so, so good, good for him to do that. And it reminded me that I've wanted to to take this stuff. This, these, all these cases are lost in a long 130-page report that nobody's going to read. You know, just bring these cases to life because they're scary. They're 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 plentiful, sadly. And you know, what it tells you is. That, you know, years after the Chicago Tribune report, you know, when they did that big report called Betrayed back in 2018, yeah. you know, CPS got some, some attention for that. You know, nothing's really been done. I mean, they've done a, a couple of things. But when you when you compare the Catholic Church has done, and I spent a good bit of time looking at what the Catholic Church did over the whatever it was, you know, quite a few years to, to block this kind of stuff. It's hard to commit crimes right now in the Catholic Church. Here at CPS, they're still doing it. You know Why? It, because they don't get caught, they, 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 it's, it's a, it looks to me like it's still a culture that allows this stuff to happen, and that's why you have these stories play out all the time. Not, not only just sexual abuse cases, but cases where they're flirting with the kids, they're, they're, they're you know, you know, grooming them, they're doing all kinds of stuff. You're talking about young kids, thousands of texts. When you look at the number of teachers that are texting students, you know, you're talking about thousands of texts. Um, it, it's scary. So, um, they're still allowing this stuff, and, and like you said, CPS is protected. The, the unions are protected. Uh, the vendors, you know, a lot of this stuff is done by vendors and security guards, um, and so the jurisdiction kind of falls apart. And who's in charge of these people? They get away with it eventually. It's uh, it's really sad, and you know, they, they give a pretty good, good bit of detail in the inspector general report of uh, what eventually happens. Well, I mean, you look, uh, the city club is um, focused on important things like uh, legalizing prostitution. And so, I mean, this this makes perfect sense. So CPS can be a pipeline to the sex worker industry since they're not teaching kids how to read and do math. Um, they can groom them to be uh, prostitutes at the uh, uh, Gimme Dose Hoes, uh, Gimme Dad Brothel, brought to you by Brandon Johnson and, and J.B. Pritzker and Tony Tony Preckwinkle at some point. So, I mean, that there's, you know, providing career paths, I guess, for CPS students with what's happening here, maybe. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the whole the whole cultural case, the moral case, it's it's so upside down, and uh, we we complain a lot about how kids can't read at CPS, but uh, you know, there's something a little bit scarier than kids can't read, and that's when 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 employees are are sexually abusing your children, and that's that that should be issue number one, right? If you can't feel safe, if you f- can't feel um, protected in a the school, then then you know, forget it, and, and, and you know, it, it goes back to why CPS should just be totally. Reconstitute it, start over, blast it, create create a whole bunch of different schools. Go to school choice. There's any any one of the options that are that are available. It needs to be done because I think this just points at the uh, not just the fiscal corruption, but the moral corruption and moral bankruptcy at CPS. I mean, but if you work at CPS or if you're a vendor or security guard, everybody has to go through this thorough training where you are you have to oh, sign an agreement. You will not text a student. I mean, unless you're you know them from like you have their number from your neighborhood or from you know one of your son's friends, but you cannot text students. That is so taboo, and they they know that, but they obviously don't care because they're using texting to, to groom them and to take advantage of them. But the thing is, well, it is goes even further than you know. It's amazing. I mean, it goes further than that. You know, they have cases where 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 the teachers are taking you know young kids to to restaurants and to what? to their homes. It's it's. And it's just, you know, list, there it is, all, you know, one after another after another. And, you know, again, they just don't care because they're not going to get caught. They're not going to get busted. It's the same thing. It's like like the, the crime we talked about. You're not going to get busted, so you might as well go for it. Well, and also, too, you know, hey, uh, Ted, big city living. It's a big school system. There's, uh, what do they what do they lie and say, 325,000 kids? Maybe there's, maybe there's 250, 275, I don't know. But it's a big system. It's talking about hundreds of thousands of kids. 
you know, there's going to be some bad apples. Uh, there's going to be some people probably. fall through the cracks. There's going to be some, you know, bad actor, bad actors, and bad actions taken. And it's just like it's just like violent crime. You know, it's just big city living. Oui, oui, it's oui. just for for the most part, it's not a problem. But you know, you're going to have in any system there are going to be some imperfections. That's all. Yeah, you always know, say the same thing about crime. Uh, yep. Same thing. You know, it's just you know, it's just a big city. We're going to have lots of murders and shootings, and uh, just have to roll with it. Uh, stop, yep. stop complaining. Wait, wait, wait. There is one case where a high school coach sent 757 text messages to a sophomore, an 11th grader, and it included sexually explicit messages and videos of his genitalia. And the Cook County State's Attorney's Office rejected charges. Now, why do you think that is, Ted? So, you know, and you'll, you'll see that in the report where, you know, somebody somebody tries to do something, then the, the charges are rejected. Uh, you know, it's a lot of times a jurisdictional fight, whether it's, you know, Cook County, Chicago, it's, it's a vendor. The vendor's not a, a school employee. And, and next thing you know, the... Look, 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 here's what the Catholic Church did, and it was, it was really tough. Right? But, you know, first thing is they, they created a one strike and you're out. You certainly don't have that at CPS. You know, they have a website uh, that the, the Catholic Church does, a website that has all the offenders. You can you can see who they are. You can track them. And, and if you're a school district somewhere else and you look you look on that website and you see that guy on the, on the site, you're not going to hire that guy. But we don't have that for CPS, and so there really are. You know, we, we do this training and stuff like that, but it's 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 uh, worthless. It's you know, you got to really hammer on these people and, and and really you know go after them. And of course, you have to do great screening and. Uh, yeah, you know, the, well, that's the, of course the, you're gonna you're gonna train a pedophile to not be a pedophile through some bull jive yeah. you know slide presentation. Of course not. It's on the screening side, and then on the punishment yeah. side to to make sure that there's. Uh, a culture of accountability within the system, but I mean that's that's just a bridge too far. That's too too uh, too much depth for CPS. And as long as nobody cares, then eh, just uh, steady as she goes. I uh, wanted to take uh, get your uh, take on um, this uh, little spring break trip you took, where you uh, drove from Illinois to Florida to be reminded of what civilization looks like and uh, <laughs> what you um, experienced on the uh, road trip. Well, you know, I, I, I drive to Florida usually every every year. Go down to to the uh, Panhandle, and uh, you can't help but go through uh, Indiana and Tennessee and Kentucky and Alabama on the way there. Yeah. And what you quickly remember is, you know, you you you, you fill up before you leave, and you you, know, you pay whatever is four dollars a gallon, and then next thing you know, you're you're down in uh, Tennessee spending three eleven or three fifteen or whatever it is. You know, you're you're saving. Oftentimes a dollar per gallon when you're on the road, and it just tells you well, what the hell, you know, why why isn't Governor Pritzker and, and all those people who voted for that capital bill that doubled the gas tax, uh, why are they just, you know, just lambasted for what they did? It's it's crazy. We have to pay so much more per gallon. And, you know, and you're talking about very regressive uh, taxes on, on gasoline. So, you know, you're talking about affecting the poor, the, the, the working class most. And so in every state you go down, you see how much cheaper it is. And, and you know what's amazing is they have paved roads in, in Tennessee right, the roads are and Alabama. Yeah. And no you know, tolls. So, so it's, uh, it just really, really ticks you off that they've done this. And it's just a, such an easy example of how corrupt Illinois is to do that. And you don't get anything additional for your dollar, dollar a gallon extra in cost. You don't get anything. You're just funding the corruption that, uh, that's uh, rampant in Illinois. Second highest gas taxes in the nation behind only for California. What? I know for what, though. For get second highest gas taxes. No, no, I'm saying, like, what are we getting for it? Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. Well, and, and you know, and that's, oh, well, you know, these other states are warm weather states, so they don't have the wear and tear on the roads. It's oh. funny, um, Ohio's not a warm weather state. Uh, there's a whole list of war, not warm weather states. Montana, I don't believe, is a warm weather no, state. It's not. Uh, you know, so it, when you're when you're second highest in the nation, there's a lot of other cold weather states, in, including all those that surround you, uh, that um, give lie to that argument. But again, uh, as you say, regressive tax, lying. Um, just just real quick, you know, we okay. wrote that piece, simple piece, and uh, you know, and it, it's it's been read all over the state. I mean, people really grabbed onto it. They, you know, they. they it hurts them. You can tell just by the readership of this article, a simple article, uh, it, it, it ticks people off. Yeah. 
It ticks them off just enough to say, uh, Illinois is terrible, I want to leave, and I'll plot my exit, but I won't do anything in the interim. Uh, at least that's the suburbanites. Actually, the suburbanites, it's even more. It's their, That's the where the blinders are on. That's where the self-delusion. Don't, don't, do not pierce my self-delusion. I have to continue to rationalize my existence here, the choices I've made, the life I'm living, and um, so I don't want to hear anything that... Uh, would um, you know upset this fictional world I've created in my head about the community in which I live and the state in which I live? Uh, I get it. That's why they're so antagonistic with the people who've left. You know, you're in Florida, you're in Tennessee, you're, you're in Vegas. I had uh, lunch with uh, Jeff Carter yesterday, who uh, left after 30 years and and is in Vegas with uh, his family. Um, you know, guy who was at the Merck. And involved in, started High Park Angels and all this stuff. Now he's not allowed to comment. Not allowed to comment on Chicago. Get Chicago out your mouth. All right. No matter what you contributed, no matter how much you care, no matter what you see, you cannot uh, 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 prick the bubble that these people live in. There's nothing because to do that would bring them uh, your face to face with the reality they've created and they just can't bring themselves to admit what they've done and with whom they've done it, can they? Uh, you know, what's fascinating is how many Jeff Carters have left Illinois and, you know, and then, you know, many of them, I know many of them. These are, these are, you know, people who are very successful, you know, created businesses, uh, you know, create jobs. And, and yet most of them have been chased away because uh, yeah and they and the response is the response is what good riddance good riddance you're, exactly. you're the bad you're the bad guy now because you left because you're not wallowing in misery and platforming ignorance like I am at least until I can get out really persuasive yeah, I stuff think, I think the, the the most amazing one for me is you know like they talk about Alabama that way you know a lot of times when we write about people leaving. You know, we'll get some pushback about, oh, yeah, people you know, go to Alabama, go to Tennessee. Uh, it's fascinating the amount of investment, the amount of growth, the amount of opportunity that these states are creating for people. It's, it's, it's phenomenal. You take northern Alabama and uh, you know, you've got, uh, anyway, tons of investment. Uh, I was in Tennessee for, for the night uh, again. But they've got so much growth, it, may, it might be too much growth. But how many, uh, that's how, their problem. How many they cranes were in the sky? How many kids? How many kids from Chicago schools, like Chicago suburb schools, are going to SEC schools these days because of the heavy recruitment there and the scholarship money that's being offered? Alabama, Miami, Florida, Georgia, all these SEC school, SEC schools, they're they're killing it with Midwest uh, out of staters from the Midwest coming to to their schools because well, because they know they don't have a future in Illinois. So, but you know, hey, take that for what it's worth and. And uh, the uh, nattering nabobs of uh, of fictional worlds, uh, the, the, those that believe they live in Candide or have to believe they live in Candide and and just sort of reflexively attack anybody who points out what Chicago and Chicagoland has actually become. Fine. OK, no problem. Ted Dabrowski, President of WirePoints, WirePoints.org, all things Illinois policy related. Thanks, Ted. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, and uh, glad you had a safe trip, and you're back. And he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. Connect with Dan and Amy on the AM560, The Answer mobile app. Just text the word APP to 64636 to download the app today. Hi, regular Joe with you again with a troubling update. Robin Voss has crossed lines that cannot be ignored. His actions to block legislation preventing the Chinese Communist Party from buying Wisconsin farmland not only disregards our agricultural heritage, but poses a clear and present danger to our state's sovereignty and security. Voss's vice chairmanship on a board with deep ties to a Chinese group, intent on influencing American legislators, reveals a conflict of interest that cannot stand. Meanwhile, regime puppets on the radio work overtime to mislead the people of Wisconsin, painting a false narrative to protect Voss. But the facts remain, and the truth is clear. With the recent recall effort, the people's voice was strong. Signatures outnumbered Voss's primary votes. It's time to finish what we started. Sign the new petition. Visit RacineRecall.org. That's RacineRecall.org. Let's recall Robin CCP Voss and reclaim our state. Paid for by Racine Recall Committee. AM 560, the answer. 
All right, coming up on Chicago's Morning Answer. Well, since I invoked Jeff Carter, this piece that he uh, wrote six years ago about network effects in Chicago and uh, what explains Chicago's ongoing demise, we'll start there at 808. Breezy, chilly today, periods of rain and fog, a high of 44. It's 8 a.m. WIND, Chicago. They can talk about me, but I can't talk about them. I'm Chris Foster, Fox News, former President Trump's complaint on true social after the judge in his New York criminal case expands a gag order to stop attacks against his family as well as the families of anyone involved in the case. Trump's been going after Judge Juan Mershon's daughter online. The judge says the attacks threaten the integrity of the case by making people worry about their loved one's safety. Trump has now posted bond mead time in his civil business fraud case. A New York appellate court gave the former president 10 days to put up the money after a panel of judges last month agreed to cut the amount needed to stop the clock on enforcement. If Trump wins the case, he won't have to pay the state anything and will get back the money. The former president is trying to overturn a judge's finding that he lied about his wealth to secure loans. He denies any wrongdoing. Chris DeMeo, Fox News. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu calls it unintended, an airstrike killing six international food aid workers and a Palestinian driver in Gaza. The American charity World Central Kitchen has suspended operations now in Gaza. An American-Canadian citizen is among the dead. There's been a deadly school shooting in Finland. This happened early this morning at a school in Vanta, just north of Finland's capital, Helsinki. Three 12-year-olds were shot. One died immediately and two others have been taken to the hospital with serious injuries. The suspect, who's been detained by police, is also 12. Officers say he used a relative's handgun and because he's under 15, he'll be placed in the care of social services. The motive, we're told, isn't yet clear. This is the third deadly school shooting in Finland this century. Jonathan Savage, Fox News. A tugboat pushing a fuel barge, the first vessel through a temporary shipping channel in Baltimore, going around the wreckage of the collapsed Key Bridge. Two more deeper channels are being worked on as debris is removed and the bodies of four men presumed killed are still unrecovered. Two bodies were recovered last week. America's listening to Fox News. Gray skies, fog, some light rain showers, 42 degrees at 8.02 on AM 560. The answer, good morning. I'm Mike Scott, the northern Illinois man charged with killing four and injuring seven others by stabbing, beating and driving over them is expected back in court today. A judge in Rockford will consider prosecutors request that Christian Soto remain jailed. A man is in critical condition after he was shot through the window of a home in the city's Morgan Park neighborhood Monday night around 8.30. On Monday afternoon, Chicago City Council met with only one item to consider, Byron Sigjo Lopez. Several of Lopez's colleagues called the meeting to try and strip the two-term alderman of his chairmanship of the Housing Committee. The Democrat Socialist appeared at a highly controversial event But that vote failed after Lopez defended himself. That if in any way, shape, or form, my actions have offended anyone, especially veterans, I'll take full accountability. But not, not once, by no means, I'm going to condemn a veteran for using his First Amendment right. In an earlier business day Monday, the police and fire committee successfully advanced an ordinance allowing shot spotter technology in individual Wards. Now, the current shot spotter contract expires September 22, but this ordinance goes before the full city council April 17. Hawks over the Bulls, 113 to 101 last night. Baseball Cubs shut out the Rockies, 5 0, and the Braves blew out the 0 4 White Sox, 9 to nothing. It's 8 03. Time for the AM 560 Business Beat, a service of Signature Bank. Visit SignatureBank.Bank for all your commercial banking needs. Now, the latest from the Fox Business Network. I'm Stuart Varney, and this is the Fox Business Report. Banking regulators are looking into the large investments made by index funds in U.S. banks. BlackRock, Vanguard, and State Street manage more than $23 trillion, and they each now hold more than 10% of shares at many banks. They are exempt from tough banking regulations as long as they remain passive investors. Shares of United Health, Humana, and CVS Health are all slumping. The Centers for 
Medicare and Medicaid services will pay 3.7% more for Medicare Advantage plans next year. Investors were hoping for a slight increase. Drug company Accorda Therapeutics has filed for bankruptcy protection. However, it says another pharma business, MERS Therapeutics, has agreed to buy substantially all of its assets. That's your Fox Business Report. I'm Ginny Cosolda. Invested in you. I have a check of traffic and weather on the way next on AM560. Dennis Prager explains the left's strategy. From the Wall Street Journal, the NIH, that's the National Institutes of Health, sacrifices scientific rigor for DEI, diversity, equity, included. Isn't the left always telling you, follow the science? It's, it's just a lie. They, wherever there is controversy, they say what works, not what is true. They don't follow the science. The Dennis Prager Show, weekdays at 11, right before Charlie Kirk at 1 on AM 560. The answer. Listen, with everything happening in our world today, it can all feel so complicated. But maintaining your home shouldn't be. For 53 years, Tyson Roofing has been primarily serving DeKalb, Kane, and Ogle counties with industry-leading quality and professionalism, priding ourselves on always using our employees and never subcontractors. In times of uncertainty, you can trust your most important asset to us. Tyson Roofing is a third-generation family-owned and operated company in DeKalb County. We've been a community standard, specializing in residential exterior maintenance since 1971. If you're in the market for a new roof or repair, fresh siding, or need to update your gutters, check us out online at TysonRoofing.com. Spelled T-H-E-I-S-E-N Roofing.com. Or call us at 815-758-8998. That's 815-758-8998. Or TysonRoofing.com. 815-758-8998. Balance of Nature's Fruits and Veggies Supplements, changing the world one life at a time. When I go out, I take a bottle of each because sometimes I end up talking to people in the restaurants here. Someone looking at them, I say, oh, this isn't a Christmas decoration, this red and green. This is my balance of nature. I tell people all the time, I'm happier and I feel better. I love this product. It's done so much for me, it's not even funny. And don't think I'm not talking to everybody that I know about it. Call 1-800-246-8751 or go to balanceofnature.com and sign up as a new preferred customer. And for a limited time, get 35% off your first order plus $10 off any additional sets. Go to balanceofnature.com or call 1-800-246-8751 and get this special offer by using discount code CHICAGO. Hey guys, Donald Trump Jr. here. Let me ask you this. Does inflation feel worse than what we're being told in the news? That's because the official inflation rate doesn't tell the whole story. Since January 2021, the cost of living has increased by 17.9%. You can't get that money back. But what you can do is stop your losses today. How? By diversifying your savings into a gold IRA from my friends at Birch Gold Group. When you're done, your money will be parked in a tangible asset with a proven history. To see how it works, get your free info kit on gold IRAs by texting the word PROTECT to 989898. I trust Birch Gold. They provide an easy process to roll over your 401k or IRA into gold without losing your tax advantaged status. So text PROTECT to 989898. That's protect to the number 989898 to get your free info kit on gold IRAs from Birch Gold. Message and data rates may apply. Eight oh eight, and let's get an update on the roads. Team Hochberg Traffic Center Time is the service of the Del Bacchio Marchetti Group of Ad Properties, Christie's International Real Estate. Experts in the Northwest suburbs and Chicago, with over $800 million in sales, you'll get the most value for your home at 708-828-0000. The Eden Solid Traffic Inbound, Cicero to Montrose, 30 minutes in from Lake Cook Road. Traveling on the Eisenhower right now, Travel time's up over an hour 20 now, 390 into the old post office. Stevenson, stop and go traffic inbound between County Line and the Des Plaines River Bridge, all due to emergency pothole repair. Two right lanes are blocked right now. Two big potholes have caused numerous 
flat tires this morning. Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan and Amy continues next. AM 560 Weather Center forecast with Steve Williams. Rain breezy and chilly today, high 44. Clouds and breezy, rain and snow showers around this evening. Low tonight, 34. Snow and rain, windy and cold tomorrow. Could pick up about an inch, the high tomorrow at 39. I'm Steve Williams on AM560, The Answer. 42 right now, next news at 830. And Chicago's Morning Answer continues next on AM560, The Answer. Now. From the Signature Bank Studios, this is Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan Proft and Amy Jacobson. This is Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan Proft and Amy Jacobson on AM560, The Answer. Top of the morning, Dan and Amy. Understanding Chicago and its pathologies. Um, not a lot of people may be interested in this. I don't know. But uh, when you see a great city self-immolate, um, maybe there's some interest in understanding why. Jeff Carter, uh, who I mentioned uh, when we were talking to Ted Dabrowski, uh, an entrepreneur, uh, trader at the Merck. Friend of the show. Friend of the show. He writes at uh, Points and Figures is his uh, sub stack. Um, and, uh, you know, Illinois expat now, like so many. He wrote this piece uh, six years ago. And it was about why Chicago lost out on those Amazon distribution centers, you may remember at the time, to New York and Washington, D.C., well, it was a big play. Chicago loses out again. Chicago's been losing out on a lot of big plays over the last several decades, hasn't it? Mm-hmm. Especially big plays that are not completely driven by government. And, of course, that's only accelerated exponentially with the combination of the lockdowns during the pandemic the lawlessness that has been sanctioned by the city government and state government. And so and and the rise now of the government union such that they have command control over the city and the state. So in the intervening six years, uh, the the somewhat. I wouldn't say rosy scenario, but hopeful scenario that Carter uh, recounted in this piece I mean, it's completely destroyed. And he would say it's, not, it's completely gone. The uh, tech investment where you've seen a return in places like Austin, Silicon Valley. It's uh, over the edge in Chicago. It's a government town and that's it. That's the main business. But the closed network piece of this, this is, you know, in, in large measure um, and Carter's a booth MBA. Uh, I think based on the uh, research of Ronald Burt, who's a sociology professor, you see. So, um, t- you know, why Chicago lost out on the Amazon Amazon distribution centers and and, you know, what it says uh, more globally about Chicago and then thinking about six years that's passed. Why not Chicago? Writes cards, big city, logistically perfect. Talent-wise, super easy to recruit in Chicago. Less so now. Tech, marketing, logistical talent. Seems to be the stuff Amazon needed. People postulated reasons for not Chicago. Sam Zell, at the time, cited the political situation. John Pletz at Cranes. <laughs> the uh, pro-rent-seeking, anti-business business magazine for Chicago. Need I say more? I'm going to take a different cut at it. He writes... Chicago's a closed network. Closed network. The network effect. Look at the 600-member committee that was tasked with bringing Amazon here. See anyone that isn't connected to anyone? See any looseness around? It's the same names in Chicago over and over again. The same people, and they get all connected back to the Democrat political machine, which is suffocating growth in Illinois and the city of Chicago. 
Great gains are not planned or linear. They jump all graphical lines. They often are accidents. That doesn't happen in tightly controlled networks. Closed networks like predictability, not randomness. And it's always been a closed network, Chicago has, since its inception. Actually, he makes a reference to a good book you should read if you want to understand this more deeply. Yeah, uh, Milton Rakoff's Nobody, We Don't Want Nobody, Nobody Sent. That's a good one. But City of the Century is really good. He uh, writes, the only places that were open in Chicago were the trading floors, and that brought new blood to the city. The floors were merit-based, and it was about can you do this and can you survive. If you knew the speaker or the mayor, you might have gotten a wink once in a while, but you had to perform. Chicago isn't going to change because it's too fearful for the power drivers in the network to have a lot of new people that will make outcomes more random. He recounts a meeting where a local Paul invited him to talk about uh, TIF financing, get his thoughts, because, you know, he's got a good financial mind. We were talking about the tax increment financing districts and what to do about them. I didn't know a lot about them, so I listened and asked a lot of questions. Oh, boy, this is your first mistake. At the end of the meeting, they asked me what I thought. I said, it seems that the TIFs give a lot of power to one person, the alderman. Why not just take all that power away, all that application process and paperwork away, and simply lower the taxes across the entire district for businesses that decide to locate and employ people there? (laughs) Uh, You could you could uh, anticipate what happens next. What happened next is that Jeff Carter was never invited back to a meeting. (laughs) Why? Because an idea like that is too scary to people in a closed network that want to control things. They don't want nobody, nobody sent. He writes at the time, I think Amazon saw that on their visits here. If you spend enough time here, you get a sense of that. We lose entrepreneurs to the coast because of this attitude. Outlier ideas are very unsettling. But those are the ones that can become blowout ideas. Uber should have started in Chicago, but I bet if the Uber guy tried to raise a seed round here, he would have he would have people look at him like he had four eyes. Black car service on your phone? Random? Come on. The other reason we lose entrepreneurs is lack of capital. And one of the reasons there's a lack of capital is because of the closed network. It's tough to raise capital if you're the nobody that nobody sent. 312-642-5600, turnkey.pro answer line. 64636DA, turnkey.pro text line. That closed network piece of it. That, you know, the trading floors are an exception, were an exception, but those are gone. Um, and yeah, you know, you have smart people in the financial services and and um, and some tech and uh, uh, I mean you have some manufacturing in the region less and less so Chicago proper but what about that closed network do you think that's gotten any better no it's getting worse why because the um, it, it, well it's gotten better some would argue oh it's gotten better because you know the Irish machine isn't in charge anymore yeah it's so the old machine to the new machine, that's the government sector union machine, where they're in the driver's seat. It's the same system. So um, you have just sort of a, a closed network layered over a closed network. And all of it runs through government. So how does... Uh, having two closed networks competing for dominance of the of a close of the overall closed network how is that spur those uh random incursions of entrepreneurs uh new people new ideas it doesn't it doesn't and it never will so chicago has all of these inherent advantages that Everybody spends so much time talking about, as does Illinois, our location, our infrastructure, Samba, the lake and the river system and the uh, surface transportation, the airports and so on and so forth. Well, yeah. And um, all that was all that promise. Has slowly and methodically. Been eliminated by. The state. As the state grew and the closed network uh, expanded their fiefdom, what's happened? Illinois has become the worst governed state in American history by the numbers. Chicago is the worst governed state 
uh, go govern city in the country by the numbers. And that's why all of you smart people moved out. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's I mean, it's very much, you know, this is not unusual. I mean, think about it in a political party setting. All political parties are sort of afraid of um, randomness. You know, the, the people in charge. It's not just Illinois, but it includes Illinois. But think about that. I've said this for, I don't know, 15 years. That's why I ran for governor 15 years ago. Probably said it for 20 years. All of this wait your turn business. Organizations that tell people to wait their turn with no promise or no path to advancement lose talented people. And instead of uh, taking an American Idol approach to candidate recruitment, for example, the Republican Party is a wait your turn party. And well, I mean, so is the so is the, so are the Democrats, but it's just, but but they just, you know, it's it's a completely different operation. So when you ran uh, for governor, did they tell you to wait your turn? It didn't wait. It's not about sure. even set, like telling me to wait my turn at that point, because I mean, you know, who's listening? It's just that you're not going to be accepted in the Republican Party. You're not going to be accepted with the the movers and shakers, the the um, visionless uh, financiers of the Republican Party at the time, and frankly since with a few exceptions, that are, were part of the closed network. We decide. And a lot of those financiers are on both sides. We, we're, we're in the closed network that finances Democrats, and we're in the closed network that finances Republicans, which is how you get the bipartisan combine that John Cass has written about for so many years. But that's how the whole thing is a closed network. The political system is at one big closed network. There's not electoral competition between Republicans and Democrats, and there never really has been. I mean, in the sense of it's going to be somebody from the closed network on either side, you know, back in the day when it was there was a perception of competition that will continue to serve the closed network. I mean, what's the difference between George Ryan and Rod Blagojevich or J.B. Pritzker? Closed network. What's the difference? Why did Bill Cellini, you know, the famous uh, impresario down in Springfield, another close network guy, say uh, infamously, when we win, we're in. When they win, we're in. We're always in. That's as, that's as big of a statement. That's a statement that everybody should know uh, as well as they know Milton Rakoff's We Don't Want Nobody, Nobody Sent. When we win, we're in. When they win, we're in. We're always in. Closed network. So you can, you know, break in or you can operate outside the closed network and still survive and even thrive. Some do. But in terms of an overall culture, it is a completely destructive one. Forget about the greenies and their degrowth agenda. Chicago's closed network is a degrowth agenda. It's just feudalism. And the feudal lords get rich, and most everybody else lives as a serf, if you stay. Paul in New Lenox, you're on Chicago's Morning Answer. Hi, guys. Great show again. I just wanted to come out on the closed network. Did that keep out the Star Wars Museum, which could have generated all kinds of revenue and millions of dollars, and it said, you know, put the Obama Library in, which doesn't really generate anything? Is that part of the decision making process? Uh, yeah, you know, thanks for the call. I mean, I don't, you know, Melody Hobson, George Lucas's uh, girlfriend uh, or wife. No, now, wife, right? no. Yeah, they yeah. got married at the promissory. They closed down a Chicago yeah. Park District area. Wonderful. Yeah. Sorry, I wasn't invited. Not part of the closed network. Um, you know, so she's she's on the inside, obviously, Ariel Capital and all that. Head of the, she was the president of the Economic Club, Democrat, you know, Obama, all that. But, you know, I mean, that's that's so many. I don't know if that's a closed network forcing out. I think it's just maybe um, higher, better use kind of thing. So, I mean, in a sense, it's a closed network because, you know, there's no real respect for um, ideas that don't serve the closed network. And maybe that, the you know, the, the Lucas Museum just didn't have enough of a payoff for the insiders. I mean, I, I would think that, you know, you get friends of the park and bespoiling the lakefront. But we'll see if um, we'll see if the closed network defers to friends of the park or these other uh, uh, goo goo uh, sort of environmental Daniel Burnham acolytes uh, when it comes to a bear stadium. I bet you they don't. 
any more than they did the Obama Library or Obama Land. Matt, Birmingham, Alabama. Hi. We're looking to move from my task. I run an outdoor power equipment company, and I've been searching from Birmingham to Greenville, Spartanburg, Charleston, Savannah. Um, just to give you an idea, the Port of Charleston alone, if we bring in our containers there, we bring in about 1,200 to 1,400 containers a year, we get a $240 tax credit towards payroll taxes that never goes away, provided we bring in more containers every year. So the first year alone, we not only save $2.5 million in freight, but we'd save $546,000 a year in payroll taxes. Wow. And it's amazing, just things like that. They're ready They're ready for people to come down. They're ready for people to work. Charleston alone has over 500 people a month moving down to that area permanently, and it's just a pro-growth area. They're just like, let's get it done, as opposed to Illinois, where we're literally just scraping and banging our head against a wall every time we turn around. And how much money do you have to donate to Governor McMaster, to the Republican Party, to the local Pauls? Uh, how many alder humans do you have to meet with, state legislators? How many how many jobs do you have to set aside for uh, the political class? Exactly. I've only met with the city council of Bessemer, Alabama, and talked to them about uh, tax and growth incentives to get us down there. And that's it. Other than that, 0.00. Yeah, right. Not a closed network. Thanks for the call, Matt. And I'm not saying Chicago is the only one in the country. Obviously, that's not true. And and politics being what it is, there's going to be uh, stick up artists all over the country. But, um, I, you know, I go back to I think I've shared this little anecdote before, but I remember talking several years ago, maybe around the time that Carter wrote that piece about Amazon, the Amazon warehouses or distribution centers, uh, talking to a guy who was uh, uh, like a senior level sales guy for a big manufacturing concern. I think it was steel. And he operated in, you know, 18 states was his territory. And he said, I'll tell you, and he's not from Chicago. He said, I'll tell you what about Chicago. It's nice to get an outsider perspective. Somebody who lives in, you know, generally speaking, a, not a closed network. Um, he said, you know, God, everything here is politics. Mm -hmm. I talk more about politics. I have to consider more politics here than I do in the, all of my other states combined. Right. Of course you do. You got to get cleared. You got to get cleared to do business in Chicago. Ron in Sycamore. Hi, Dan. Hi, Amy. Hey, uh, I am part of a small person uh, business. I started a financial literacy company called Boodle, and I'm a former CPS student. I presented my company. Uh, the schools that I was able to get into loved it, but the the system eventually kicked me out, and I am not coming back to CPS. They don't care about students. They don't want to educate them financially, and nobody cares. Mm. Yeah, you have it to be approved contractor, right? So, yep, they didn't, I, I was let, you, they didn't let you into their little circle. When, when the when the pandemic hit, mm -hmm. I was shut out for about a year and a half, and I had to get reapproval. I've been I've had two FBI background checks, all types of things. But no, CPS does not want me. They don't want those students educated financially. Yeah. Or they have somebody else uh, in mind to do it that's got more clout than you do. Yeah. Thanks for the call, Ron. Dan and Amy, Chicago's Morning Answer. The big stories of the day. Then talk about them right here on Chicago's Morning Answer on AM 560. The Answer. A great smile can make you feel happy and confident. So when you consciously conserve your teeth, that glowing smile will show through. At Best Dental Group, doctors Economos, Gavalis, and their staff are ready to help you create that perfect look or maintain the one you have now. Along with general dentistry, Best Dental Group is a multidisciplined practice with an orthodontist, periodontist, and prosthetic specialists on site. They use the newest breakthroughs in dental technology, such as titanium implants, Invisalign clear braces and laser treatments. Don't let fear get in the way. They can recommend sedation to make your experience as comfortable as possible. Best Dental Group is located in historic downtown Bartlett and is a multilingual office. Call 630-830-4930. That's 630-830-4930. Or visit bestdental.org. Best Dental Group, sharing your conservative values and helping you to conserve your teeth. Imagine what your future looks like. Is the picture a little blurry? 
Hey, it's Sean Thompson here for Alpha Wealth Group. When we look ahead, we're visualizing where we want to be. And for retirement, that can be hard without a written financial plan. Tom Fortino of Alpha Wealth Group can help you bring your retirement picture into focus. For decades, Tom has been crafting customized financial strategies. His goal is to help you protect your savings, grow your wealth, and create an income strategy you cannot outlive. If you're nearing or already in retirement, it's time to get your plan on paper. So bring your readers and let's take a look at it closely. Call Tom at 630-934-1855 and schedule a complimentary retirement consultation. There is no cost. There is no obligation. This is a chance to get a clearer view of your retirement. The number again is 630-934-1855 or visit alphawealthgroup.com. And listen to the Alpha Wealth Hour Saturday mornings right here on AM560, The Answer. Advisory services through Retirement Wealth Advisors, LLC, and SEC Registered Investment Advisor. Insurance and annuities offered through Alpha Wealth Group, licensed in Illinois. The following is a paid political announcement. Governor Pritzker's State Board of Education policy is that public schools can socially transition and counsel children that they are a sex other than their biological sex without telling their parents. Send a message to Springfield that we will not allow the government to make decisions for our children without parental consent. Help Parents Matter Coalition get an advisory question on the 2024 ballot about parental rights. Visit Parents Matter coalition.org to get involved now that's parentsmattercoalition.org paid for by the parents matter coalition oil investments involve a high degree of risk and actual results may vary oil and natural gas keep going up as the russia conflict escalates get in on the next major oil boom now and help the u.s with your patriotic investment that can potentially pay you monthly income for up to 20 or more years That's the sound of a producing oil well and the sound of a smart investment. If you're an SEC-accredited investor and have at least 25,000 liquid now, you can take advantage of Encore Energy's projects and a huge tax savings for this year. If you invest in oil and natural gas, you're allowed to write off nearly 100% of your investment in the first year. Goldman Sachs is projecting oil to go up to $100 a barrel, and natural gas is the fuel of the future and trading at record prices. Call 800-287-6691. Encore Energy is a major investment investor and experienced operator in its core area of operations. Call now and learn how to deduct 100% of your investment and create 20 or more years of potential monthly income. Call 800-287-6691. That's 800-287-6691. AM560, the answer. All right, coming up on Chicago's Morning Answer. 838, a, uh, the president of Guyana slashes and burns an eco-supremacist from the BBC. We'll start there with Jonathan Lesser from the National Center for Energy Analytics at 838. Yeah, and if you haven't heard it, stick around. You'll love it. But now let's head into the newsroom. Here is Mike Scott. 832 on AM 560, The Answer. Rain, clouds, and fog in the area. And a 12-year-old student opened fire at a secondary school in southern Finland, killing one, seriously wounding two others. Thunderstorms moving across the southeast into the Ohio River Valley today. Storms also hit parts of the country hard Monday from Texas to St. Louis. A man is in custody after allegedly ramming his car into a security gate at an FBI office in Georgia. We actually trained for this type of situation. We recently did have training to prevent this that we that we uh, have done before. Officials say the suspect tried to follow another vehicle through security gates to get inside. A federal judge is rejecting Hunter Biden's efforts to get criminal tax charges dismissed. Prosecutors last year accused the president's son of failing to pay his taxes along with tax evasion. The Northern Illinois man charged with killing four and injuring seven others by stabbing, stabbing, beating and driving over them is expected back in court. A judge in Rockford today is expected to consider prosecutors' request to keep Christian Soto behind bars. A man is in critical condition after he was shot through the window of a home in the city's Morgan Park neighborhood last night. The victim was standing along, uh, along the front room of that home along South Elizabeth when bullets entered through a front window around 8.30. Hawks were uh, crushed by the Bulls. Uh, uh, Hawks uh, actually crushed the Bulls. 113-101 in Chicago. Not as close as the score would indicate. Cubs also shut out the Rockies 5-0. And the Braves blew out the White Sox 9-0 in eight innings. The news is a service of Summit Racing Equipment. With the parts you need to keep your truck rolling right. Custom grills to covers and everything in between. 
ShotSummitRacing.com. Use promo code RADIO for $10 off an order of $100 or more. Exclusions apply. Offer ends 4-14-24. A check of traffic and weather on the way next on AM560. For the past eight years, AM560 has welcomed Dennis Prager to Chicago for a night of cigar smoking and great conversation. And this year, on Thursday, May 23rd, we welcome Dennis back for one final cigar night. Presented by Control Point Engineering. Join Dennis, Dan Proft, and Sean Thompson for a night you won't want to miss. Tickets are on sale now at 560theanswer.com slash cigar. That's 560theanswer.com slash cigar. Sponsored by Liberty Cigar Company. The future of medicine is here at QC Kinetics. QC is the nation's leader in the most exciting revolution in pain management we've seen in decades. Regenerative medicine. If you're tired of achy joints, if your joint pain is keeping you from doing what you love, you need to call QC Kinetics today. Surgery, steroids, drugs, these are no longer your best options. Regenerative medicine at QC Kinetics is transforming lives with innovative treatment that delivers lasting results. QC Kinetics is under the leadership of National Medical Director Dr. Michael Scheinkup. Dr. Scheinkup is a pioneer in this field with 20 years of clinical work, research, teaching, and publishing. He wants to get you relief with a needle, not a knife. Call QC Kinetics now for a free consultation. Appointments now available on Saturdays. Call 312-809-5955, 312-809-5955. Again, that's 312-809-5955. Have you been struggling to find an easy, safe, and secure document scanning solution for Salesforce.com, Microsoft 365, SharePoint, or OnBase by Highland? Your struggle is now over, and it's time to get your documents and operations into the 21st century with IOT Smart Connected Scan. It's easy to turn physical paper into digital documents and have them directly uploaded to the cloud with IoT Smart Connected Scanning from IDT. And you don't need a degree in computing or IT to make it happen. Using QR code technology uniquely configured for your specific business, anyone can set the IoT Smart Connected Scanning device up in five minutes or less, saving your organization money and valuable time. Remote employees can even capture documents and send them safely and seamlessly. Organize documents efficiently and securely with IoT Smart Connected Scanning from IDT. To see a demo or to order now, go to ready4idt.com. That's ready4idt.com. Use promo code SMART and receive 10% off your order. IDT, putting paper in its place. Let's see, if something costs less, but people are happier with it, that sounds like something to look into, and that is MediShare. And maybe you've heard switching to MediShare to pay for health care can save many families up to 500 bucks a month, and that's huge. But it's also true people are way more satisfied after making the switch, too. The member satisfaction rate for MediShare is double that of the typical health insurance plan. Double. MediShare works, too. It's been around for 30 years. Members have shared more than $5 billion of each other's bills. People love having telehealth and a huge nationwide PPO network. So, yeah, really, you can save a ton and like it better. Imagine being happy with how you're taking care of your health care. So if you're self-employed or part of the gig economy or you just want a plan you're happy with, you can call right now and get a price within two minutes. See what you can save. This is a very, very smart use of two minutes. Here's the number you need. Call 844-41-BIBLE. That's 844-41-BIBLE. 844-41-BIBLE. It's 838. Let's get an update on the roads. Team Hochberg Traffic Center time. Eden's inbound solid 30 minutes. Lake Cook Road to the junction. The Kennedy a solid 90 minutes. O'Hare into the Burn Circle interchange. Traveling on the Ike inbound. Right now an hour 13 from 390 to the old post office. Stevenson coming inbound solid traffic. First Avenue to Kedzie. Delays as well on the Dan Ryan, 38 minutes, 95th into the Burns Circle Interchange. Delays on the Tri-State, stop and go northbound right at Roosevelt. And on the Reagan, you have a slow ramp to the northbound Tri-State. Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan and Amy continues next. AM 560 Weather Center forecast, breezy and chilly, a high of 44 today. Rain and snow overnight, a low of 34. More snow and rain tomorrow, a high of 39. It's 42 right now. Next news coming up at 9. Chicago's Morning Answer continues next on AM 560, The Answer. 
Now, from the Signature Bank Studios. Only the biggest stories, only the biggest guests, and only the biggest opinions. This is AM560, The Answer. Top of the morning, Dan and Amy. The arrogance of the New York Times and the D.C. press corps generally is just boundless. This piece on uh, Guyana, uh, you know, South America, uh, borders Venezuela to the west, has been a a rumored target of Maduro as he destroys his country uh, because of Guyana's oil fields. The New York Times piece, is Guyana's oil a blessing or a curse? Because what the New York Times wants for Guyana is to be the sort of noble victims of of uh, centuries of colonial rule, first the Dutch and the British, uh, preserving, heroically preserving the Amazon rainforest without giving in to, uh, to, to the modern world and to developing and to becoming self-sufficient because that entails the use of fossil fuels and uh, exacerbating the climate change problem. They want mascots. They don't want independent people, not in America and not in foreign lands. Well, the president of Guyana, Mohammed Irfan Ali, has a different perspective. And uh, it came through fairly loud and clear in an interview with some eco-freak flack for the BBC, who was essentially touting the... uh, AOC Greta Thunberg line when it comes to uh, developing the oil sector in Guyana for the benefit of its people. Take a listen. Let's take a big picture look at what's going on here. Over the next uh, decade, two decades, it is uh, expected that there will be $150 billion worth of oil and gas extracted off your coast. It's an extraordinary figure, but think of it in practical terms. That means, according to many experts, more than two billion tons of carbon emissions will come from your seabed, from those reserves, and be released into the atmosphere. I I don't know if you as a head of state went to the COP in Dubai. Let me stop you right there. Do you know that Guyana has a forest forever that is the size of England and Scotland combined, a forest that stores 19.5 gigatons of carbon, a forest that we have kept alive, a forest that we have kept alive. Does that give you the right? No, Does no, that no, no, give no. you the that, right that, to release that all of this right? carbon? Does from... that give you the right to, to lecture us on climate change, I am going to lecture you on climate change because we have kept this forest alive that stores 19.5 gigatons of carbon that you enjoy, that the world enjoy, that you don't pay us for, that you don't value, that you don't see a value in, that the people of Guyana has kept alive. Guess what? We have the lowest deforestation rate in the world. And guess what? Even with our greatest exploration of the oil and gas resource we have now, we will still be uh, net zero. Guyana will still be net zero. With all our exploration, a couple of we'll points. still be net zero. No, no, pa- there is no, no powerful, powerful no, no, words, no, no, no. Mr. President. Hold, hold, hold. But a, a couple. I, I'm not completed as yet. I am not finished as yet. I am just not finished as yet because this is the hypocrisy that exists in the world. We, the world, in the last 50 years has lost 65 percent of all its biodiversity. We have kept our biodiversity. Are you valuing it? Are you ready to pay for it? When is the developed world going well, to pay for it? Or are you, you in the pockets? You, are you in the oh pockets boy. of those who have damaged the environment? Are you in the pockets? Are you and your system in the pockets of those who destroyed the environment through the industrial revolution and now lecturing us? Are you in their pockets? Are you paid by them? Are you all paid right, to keep right, their Mr. message? No, oh, no, no. They're paid by the uh, rent-seeking uh, green sector that's being underwritten by Western governments. But uh, otherwise, uh, other than his riff at the end about the Industrial Revolution, like it was a bad thing, um, I appreciate I appreciate not allowing uh, himself and his country to be infantilized from some dandy from across the pond. Well done, Mr. President. Jonathan Lesser joins us now. He's a senior fellow at the National Center for Energy Analytics. Jonathan, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Uh, It's about time that um, we had some uh, heads of state 
uh, in the developing world or in the industrialized world or somewhere in between uh, start to provide chapter and verse to the West uh, like um, like uh, President Ali did, don't you think? Uh, yeah, it's interesting to hear him uh, speak. And like you say, I think uh, the riff about industrial revolution was a little off base. But uh, uh, other than that, um, you have a BBC reporter who's uh, uh, very arrogant, who uh, hmm. yeah. fails, fails to consider that what the developing world wants is to be developed. Uh, they want a standard of living that's like ours. And what we take for granted health care, uh, electricity supplies, uh, travel, uh, shelter, um, a lot of that's lacking. And, and you know, they rightly want, want all of that for themselves, too. And we seem to be in this uh, uh, phase of trying to uh, basically keep them poor and miserable uh, and, and then making ourselves uh, more miserable as well. At least that's what the goal for some of these people is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, shared misery. That's the uh, the big vision uh, coming out of the West, generally speaking. And uh, you and Mark Mills write about this uh, w- with respect to uh, our energy sector and specifically this uh, uh, EPA mandate that sort of backdoors uh, uh, a transformation of the auto industry in this country by, you know, 2032 to EVs. Well, that's correct. And, and in fact, the EPA on uh, Good Friday, just, just last Friday, um, released a rule about heavy trucks, the large trucks that, that uh, keep this country going, transporting goods, uh, you know, all across the country. And they want to make electric trucks the rule. And, you know, right now there's no one even manufactures these trucks uh, in the West. Uh, the only one who's manufacturing some of them are, is China. Uh, and, you know, the problem is the electric grid is is teetering on the edge of failure already um, as we shut down uh, coal plants, shut down natural gas plants, and try to replace it with intermittent wind and solar. Um, you know, so what we pointed out was even if you ignore the, the problem of electricity supplies being insufficient to electrify all cars and, and most everything else, um, what you have is the infrastructure, just building the new transmission lines, uh, finding the transformers. Uh, it, it, uh, you tell you it'll take years to order a, a large transformer. We're going to need thousands upon thousands of these. We'll need millions of distribution transformers. Those are the ones that look like uh, little canisters on top of uh, uh, electricity poles running down your neighborhood street. Um, We'll need millions of them. We'll need materials for all that. Uh, And it's just not going to happen. Given given the rate we do things now, um, none of this is going to happen. And then... Uh, Oh, yeah, but like the individual level, I mean, millions of homes, apartment complexes, they're going to need electrical upgrades to accommodate all this. That's true. That's absolutely true. And and so you're going to need a lot more electricians and utilities are going to need more line linemen to install all this stuff. And, and you know, utilities are already desperate for linemen because uh, uh, the number of people is is shrinking. The, the average age of the workforce is going up. Uh, so the... the the labor that's going to be required is not there. And it's not something you, you, you can't just hand somebody an apron and say, go uh, work on high voltage transmission lines. Uh, they won't last very long. Although the good news is uh, there was a piece, uh, I think it was in the journal, about uh, an increasing number of people, uh, young people going into the trades as opposed to college uh, with the increase in vocational offerings and so forth. And um, the path towards making money as opposed to piling up debt. So, you know, maybe on the workforce side, it's a possibility, but that still doesn't cure the overall uh, vision problem that the central planners have with respect to our grid, does it? Um, no, it, it, it does not. Uh, and, and right now, our grid simply cannot handle it. The grid operators are warning uh, the feds that this cannot, uh, they, they can't handle it. We're going to have massive blackouts. Uh, at the worst possible times, you know, in the in the in middle of winter, uh, you know, imagine a, a day in Chicago where the temperature is below zero, 
Uh, there was no wind and sunshine, uh, and the power's out. Yep. Uh, that'll have a real impact. That That's going to result in the deaths of many people. Something else, too, about this um, that I hadn't really considered, but Alyssa Finley had a good column on it, um, about uh, how uh, the move to a green energy grid makes the U.S. more vulnerable to cyber attacks. She writes... So-called distributed, uh, distributed energy systems provide an increasing number of entry points to the grid. An academic study last November modeled a case in which a remote attacker commanded or commandeered public EV charges to create electric frequency distortions that led to a system-wide blackout in Manhattan. Um, such attacks will become feasible by 2030 with increased EV adoption, the authors of the study warn. And you're talking about uh, Biden wanting to install 5,000 public EV chargers by 2030, Finley writes, that's 500,000 potential bots America's enemies could turn into weapons to take down the grid. So the grid failure on its own because of overload, the grid failure, uh, the, the grid being vulnerable to cyber attacks that can uh, compromise our national security. That, that's right. And that's another issue. We didn't, you know, obviously discuss that in our article. Um, but, yeah, you've got a national security issue as well from we're relying on China for most of these supplies of, of minerals that you need uh, for this grid uh, and for the all the batteries and the EVs. Uh, all that almost all of it comes from China. Uh, and, you know, that that's certainly a national security issue on top of the cyber attack issue. So, but, you know, either no one is thinking about this at, at the government level or they are thinking about it and they don't care. And one of the things we mentioned is, you know, one way to reduce the demand for electricity from all the EVs are going to mandate is just not let you charge them when you want. Mm-hmm. So they'll just enforce uh, limitations on when you can charge your vehicle, when, when you can have power. Well, right. I mean, as as they're doing with uh, home appliances, uh, in addition to cars too, right? I mean, they're they're um, off in every which direction to regulate uh, your access to the sort of energy that um, uh, you enjoy uh, to live a life you enjoy. Well, that's right. More utilities are are uh, installing uh, uh, you know meters that essentially let them shut your power off. Uh, now, you know, some people think, you know, they get a credit on their bill, and some people obviously think that's worth it. That's fine. But when it becomes mandatory, which it's likely to become, uh, you know, then you've got essentially, uh, you know, centralized control of what you can do. Where you, Can you travel? Can you uh, heat your home, cool your home? Um, and that's, you know, is that the kind of society you really want to have, or do you want to have an, an unfettered society where basically you can do what you want when you want? Uh, the, it seems the, like a, a lot of people in our government don't want that. I mean, the other piece of it, too, which you were hinting at, is the price tag. I, I remember this exchange between uh, Senator John Kennedy from Louisiana and the number two guy at EPA from last year where, you know, uh, you, you want $50 trillion. Well, for, for what? What are you going to do with it? No idea. And it's, you know, nice round numbers, as as always, who is at the central planner? So you have 50 50 trillion. Make it 100 trillion. Make it 200 trillion. Why why not? If we're just having fun with numbers and printing money. So you have a a country that's $35 trillion in debt, um, that's suffering from, I mean, double digit inflation in terms of how people actually live their lives over the last three years, uh, and seeing um, household income not keeping up with household expenses. And that doesn't even include a hundred trillion dollars plus in unfunded liabilities. And we're going to spend fifty trillion over five years to transform the economy. It's going to go off without a hitch. Everything will be delivered on time and under budget, and we'll have a brave new world. Sure. <laughs> sure. Well, yeah, that's uh, you, you've described it very well. Um, you, you know, we can't afford this. And and the, the thing about it, it's all being driven obviously by climate change. And yet, uh, like you mentioned <clears throat> before, you had me on. Um, the the emissions reductions, for example, the EPA's estimate of emissions reductions from the large truck w- rule between 2027 and 2055, so roughly 30 years, uh, will be about a billion metric tons of carbon. And wow, that sounds like a huge number, except it's less than what the increase in China's emissions last year. It's about the equivalent of less than one week's worth of world emissions in 2022 
and those emissions just keep going up and up. So nothing we do will have any impact on uh, you know climate change at all. It, it, it won't even be measurable. So we're going to spend trillions of dollars that we don't have uh, to accomplish absolutely nothing except probably enrich politically connected people, uh, and that is driving this whole uh, madness for green energy. Jonathan Lesser, Senior Fellow at the National Center for Energy Analytics. Jonathan, thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Thank you, and he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. You're listening to Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan Proft and Amy Jacobson on AM560, The Answer. Would you go to court without a lawyer when the other guy is lawyered up? Or are you going to go it alone and learn law and procedure as you go? When you have an insurance claim for your home or business, it's the same thing. This is Dan Lights from Crosscom. We inspect your property, file your claim, negotiate the damages, and maximize your settlement with your insurance company. Insurance companies will send out their inspectors that work for them, get paid by them, and represent them, not you. If we complete the repairs approved by your insurance company, our service is free. Crosscom Public Adjusters has turned denied claims into approved claims. We've also increased insurance claims anywhere from 23 to 1,000%, and we could do the same for you. We are licensed by the Department of Insurance and work in Illinois, Northwest Indiana, and Southern Wisconsin. Crosscom Public Adjusters, 630-871-5500. Online at CrosscomInc.com. That's CrosscomInc.com. Crosscom, building trust for over 20 years. The following is a paid political announcement. Politicians in Illinois have taken away your parental rights. Parents no longer must be notified before your minor daughter is prescribed hormonal birth control or receives an abortion. We need to send a message to Springfield that we will not allow the government to make decisions for our children without our parental consent. Help Parents Matter Coalition get an advisory question on the 2024 ballot about parental rights. Visit ParentsMatterCoalition.org to get involved now. That's ParentsMatterCoalition.org. Paid for by the Parents Matter Coalition. The IRS is the most powerful collection agency on earth. And if you owe back taxes, the news isn't good. The IRS is raising the interest rate it charges on unpaid taxes and further rate hikes are expected. Most people don't know it, but the IRS adds interest charges to your tax debts daily. So if you owe the IRS today, you'll owe even more tomorrow. And it doesn't stop until you get right with the IRS. The good news is getting right can start with one phone call to Optima Tax Relief. America's number one tax relief firm. Optima's tax professionals specialize in the Fresh Start Initiative, a powerful IRS program that can save you thousands if you qualify. In fact, the experts at Optima have resolved over $1 billion in tax debt for their clients. Call now for a free consultation. Call 800-965-1433. 800-965-1433. 800-965-1433. Optima Tax Relief. Some restrictions apply. For complete details, please visit OptimaTaxRelief.com. Hi, regular Joe with you again with a troubling update. Robin Voss has crossed lines that cannot be ignored. His actions to block legislation preventing the Chinese Communist Party from buying Wisconsin farmland not only disregards our agricultural heritage, but poses a clear and present danger to our state's sovereignty and security. Voss's vice chairmanship on a board with deep ties to a Chinese group, intent on influencing American legislators, reveals a conflict of interest that cannot stand. Meanwhile, regime puppets on the radio work overtime to mislead the people of Wisconsin, painting a false narrative to protect Voss. But the facts remain and the truth is clear. With the recent recall effort, the people's voice was strong. Signatures outnumbered Voss's primary votes. It's time to finish what we started. Sign the new petition. Visit RacineRecall.org. That's RacineRecall.org. Let's recall Robin CCP Voss and reclaim our state. Paid for by Racine Recall Committee. Are you ready for an adventure of a lifetime? Journey with me, Dr. Sebastian Gorka, and my friend and colleague Mike Gallagher on the Patriots Alaska Cruise this summer. An incredible opportunity to engage with other like-minded patriots on an epic seven-day cruise over Fourth of July weekend. Witness the untouched wilderness of Alaska over pristine water, all while celebrating America's past and future. June 29th to July 6th. Call 855-565-5519 or go to Patriots Alaska Cruise. Dot com. AM 560, the answer. 
All right, Dan, tomorrow we're going to have to break down our brackets because we have a pool going here. And uh, I got to tell you, guess who's in first place and guess who's in last place? Uh, I'm going to guess the uh, skateboarders in first place Uh, because that's how it usually goes with these pools. uh, And guess who's pulling up the, the rear? The, the guy who knows the most about basketball, that would be me. Yeah. Mike yeah. Scott's a close second, but that would be me. No, Mike's in the middle, so. No, he's a close second in basketball now. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So it goes Justin Quinn, Mike, me, and then you. Yeah, and then I'll tell you how much I've actually won betting in the real world on basketball. Okay, it's 9 a.m. W-I-N-D, Chicago. An unintended